Yo, 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 once again, we back. This is with just a messenger's podcast. Of course, I'm Mo. I'm uh, Mike. You know we can't do those do work media Sunday things without my dog Drew Money on the boards. I, 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 how y'all feeling? Feeling good, feeling good. How y'all doing? Mad things, brother. Mad, Mad things. things <laughs> Mad things, Drew. Mad you already right, know. It's the weekend, bro. My dog was on this rocket power shit, man. My dog was surfing this, this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit was fun. Auto <laughs> rocket out this Big bitch. Auto. Big it, auto. It's been a minute, bro. It's been a minute. But it was a good time. I ain't never did that shit. I ain't really a water person like that. But. I did the wakeboard before. I never did like the big surfboard. Man, I'm telling you. Right now, everything you see like on TV, how like... Like you paddle out and you damn have that nose dive and that's when you're supposed to stand up. All that shit is real, but we don't have like big waves. Yeah, here. we don't so get big waves like, like that. Yeah. So the good feel of just feeling like the board getting taken by the wave and you're just like gliding all the way up to the fucking shore and oh, shit. To sure. uh, yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's the best part of it, really for me. Um, also with this back, I ain't really been trying to stand up and do yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But it was just more so of just laying on the board, getting back comfortable with being on the board. I used to surf in high school and shit. But um, we used to go out to the washout. I saw a fucking Dorful fan come right past us, bro. And I, I left that shit alone after that you shit. You fucking with it after that? I know what that shit was. They were like, it's a dolphin, bro. But I doubt it. Like, dolphin We go, do got dolphins right Yeah, but we got dolphins go up and down. This Dorful fan was like- He just was- <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's yeah. a difference when that you see that that motion of that shit just moving yeah. side to side versus up and down. So up and down, I'm thinking it's a dolphin. Side to side, I'm thinking it's a shark. I want to do this shit where uh, I be seeing people do this more like at the lakes where they just be on the back of the boat and they hold the little shit. Oh, wakeboard. Yeah, wakeboard them basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's fun times too, bro. Until you fall and then you just sitting in this water like, bro, <laughs> come get me. <laughs> yeah. Them motherfuckers be going fast yeah, too. Yeah, that shit fun as a bitch. But water ski, anything water, bro, I'm going to do. I'm with it. Yeah, I fuck with the water. No. I would fuck with that wakeboard shit though. I would. Yeah, it's... um. With y'all Paracel? You done Paracel before? Yeah. I'll try that, Africa. I want to try that. That looked like a good time. Man, that shit was lit, bro. Like, I'm (laughs) afraid of heights, but I still do it. That shit, I mean, it's you're very comfortable once you like sit back and relax and just take it in, bro. It's it's it was I would say it was easy for me because one, you running down the hill, so it's not like you feel like you're jumping off of a cliff. You know what I mean? I think too, when he was in Brazil, there was like a like kind of like a step off the cliff. You know, mm-hmm. then you kind of go into you know the motion of it. For me, it was just straight running down the hill and like walking you off. Of the, yeah, walking off the hill basically. Yeah, but that shit was lit. Shit was definitely lit, man. Love the beach, bro. But that's I think I got like one more day in me. It's also getting I mean beautiful weather back to back days. Falls yeah, yeah. here. It ain't, it ain't it's like, approaching. It ain't yeah. like beaming hot no more. Like that's what I do. Like. Yeah. yeah, August usually be the one that kick it up, but mm-hmm. I mean, August started off with those being days, but like, I mean, we getting towards the middle yeah, now. Yeah, so it's damn it, yeah. Yeah, September. Yeah. Once September get here, like, you have some of those reminder summer days, but overall, we kicking up into the fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Best time of the year. Yep, tattoo season. What you about to drop this um, this season, bro? Uh, I got appointment Thursday, bro. I think I'm going to start a sleeve before the year over. Yep, got an appointment on Thursday. Excited about that. But, um, I mean, you know, I feel like after August, it's about to get hella busy. I mean, yeah, summer technically over, yeah. in my opinion. And that's where I'm at When August it. get here. Yeah, as long as I'm, like, able to be, like, healed and everything by December, by my birthday, I'm cool. You know? Good. Yeah. But, that's, I mean, I'm thinking, like, at least, at least, like, three appointments before this year's out. When's you know? your birthday again? 20... December 30th. 30th? Oh, okay. The GOAT day. Yeah, boy, this year kicking up, man. We about to get into the shit. Honestly, it's about to be the fourth quarter. We in the third now. Mm-hmm. Fourth quarter kick up, man, in 2023. Right there around, man. It's crazy. This summer, I think this one is probably the fastest summers. You know, I always say July. I feel like it dragged, but it kind of feel like it kicked up a little bit of speed. Yeah, man, you out here living your best, bro. <laughs> that's, that's bees up shit, bro. And also, not to mention, you know, the fucking world spinning faster kind of helps with that, uh, you know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, once I saw something the other day uh, for, like, New York. The sun, the sun set in at 8 p.m. It won't set past 8 p.m. until um, March of 2023. So that's how you know fall approaching. Mm. 
Yeah, fall is definitely. And they we went away from daylight savings, correct? Yeah. This is the last year. This is the last year. Okay. So I think this. I think this is the last year. We will do it in November. Okay. But I think this is the last year we'll be doing because there's only a few states I know that don't do it. Arizona is one for sure. They don't do it. They never did it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's other states that do, but I know them for sure. They ain't never done daylight savings time. Oh, that's just gonna be so crazy. Like, I want to know how it's, because you know when the winter time come around, the sun is still gonna set earlier. Mm-hmm. I just want to know at what time because we always fall back, mm-hmm. and usually the sun will be going down like around what five six. Mm-hmm. So I figure if we don't do it, it'll be like round. Like it'd be six by min- uh, by by six is black as fuck outside. Yeah. Bro. So you think what seven maybe? No, man. I think it still be down. It won't be. It won't be like in the peak summer. The sun going down at nine. Yeah, peak summer. Yeah. So I'm figuring around the winter time, we we'll probably be in between seven, eight. Yeah. If we don't do it, but I think this is the last year we're doing it. That's crazy, though. I, I never, I never like falling back. To be honest, I never liked it either. Only because I like to gain an extra hour, but the sun just go down so early. Yeah. I mean, it's still going to go down early. It's just we still on one time. See what I'm saying? Yeah, we on yeah. one time. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still figuring what time would that be? I fucking no idea. I don't think it'd be five, six o'clock. Yeah. I don't know, man. But I'm excited. I mean, to see what this is gonna bring, man. What kind of well not excited. I'm just intrigued to see what shift this does to people also like nature. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you think shit, nigga, I've been falling back for 31 years now. All right. So not to do that no more or spring forward, it, it, it'll be different. It really will be different. People be missing that hour, that extra hour, bro. But I, I mean, I'd be up just bullshitting for that extra hour. Yeah. I that still hour, get, that hour be punishing people. Yeah. Like, now, I, when you spring forward, it might hit, it might affect you worse than falling back. Fact. The spring forward one, and you know what else? We record on a Sunday. Yeah. So if we spring forward, it's like, oh, shit. We got to make sure we on our P's and Q's that Saturday. Like if you out. At two o'clock, it's three a.m. Technically, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it, it typically happens. It changes at, like at two o'clock. Yeah, no, it changes at twelve. So at twelve, it becomes one. You know what I mean? So it's okay. you. You lose an hour, but also sometimes. I mean, when you're in the club and you're fucking able to get an hour back, you know what I mean? You get an extra hour, so you party technically till three. But I actually was out on a night when we fall back in like 2010, 11. Mm-hmm. Niggas are still going at it. Yeah. Because they gained the extra hours, so it was like niggas wasn't tripping. The police can't shut you down. Yeah, they can't shut you down, yeah. yeah. Nah, we, shit. When I was doing security, lights on, nigga. I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's two o'clock somewhere, nigga. Lights up. Let's go. Get these people out of here. Because that gives us an extra hour just to damn clean up and chill out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we closed like it was still regularly two o'clock, even though it was like one o'clock technically. Nah, bro. We're done. Yeah, y'all drunk anyways. Like you don't need another hour to get shit face. <laughs> Niggas gonna use. They gonna take advantage of that extra hour though, mm-hmm. for sure. I was at the uh, Mint Museum yesterday in Charlotte. That shit was real dope. My first time there. Okay. Had a lot of great art in there. They had like three different floors of different type of art and shit. What's your uh, your favorite piece out of there? You remember or who was it by? Well, painting wise. Uh, it was probably I just posted it. It was the one, uh, the Watts riots, mm-hmm. and Selma. Then they had one. It looked like I can't really describe it. It was like this black sw- black woman's face. It looked kind of pinkish and black, but I can't remember what type of exact art that it was. Those was are pretty dope. Then you got to the level they had like the abstract art. Like the shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. They had this one piece. They had this one. Let me see if I can find that shit. I got the shit in my photos. Um, like this shit right here, that shit crazy. Yeah, that's hard. You see that? Oh yeah, that's dope. That's a real dope. Who's right that there. by? Oh, I didn't get the name. Oh okay. And they were particular about certain art pieces, like you know, don't touch and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was overall, it was some very good shit. You know, just expanding my palette. You know, I feel that. I feel that. Then they had this one, this one piece like this right here. It's the trees. These were shot in Charleston. Oh, okay. You know, Angel oak, Angel oak trees. Oh, yeah. that's just yeah, okay. You know, we always say that trees could talk, man. So anytime I see those trees, it just give me a certain type of feeling like these ancestors were here, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no, overall it was a dope one. There's another one I can't think of a name. That's strictly like a black, black museum. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a real dope experience, man. 
they building up a they stay having construction going on, but you know. It was real dope, real dope experience, man. Then they got a section for like kids. Mm -hmm. So if you used to take like your daughter there, they got like a section for little kids and they could check out art. They can actually do certain things like ages three and up. They got um what's it called? Van Van Gogh? I think he has um You got an installation here. Mm-hmm. And that's one yeah. of my I, I enjoy all I haven't that been camera. to that one. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a where that at? I think it's at the Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. so I'm the a, tickets like these, the tickets kind of high though, but it's not bad. They taxi as fuck. Yeah, bro. they tax them for that shit. Yeah, this, this one here was like fifteen a person. Oh, okay. yo, them Van Gogh shit is like almost fifty dollars a head. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, but, but it's I a would, lot. It's a lot of shit. It's a bro. lot it's of a lot shit, shit that you really can get. But if you know Some Van, Gogh, interactive too. Van Gogh has a very one of my favorite pieces is from Van Gogh. Um, so I'm definitely gonna check that shit out before it leaves, Charles. I mean, I got to like I think September. Um. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna check that out. I enjoy a good museum. This was a real dope piece too. I don't know you yeah, see. I saw that. Yeah, this is done by um, Kahide Wiley. Okay, he did that. He got a lot of um, pieces kind of like that. Yeah, this is real dope. This is different. I fuck with this. Go ahead and drop that piece and drop it in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know how much <laughs> a lot of these pieces in there cost. Facts. A real Facts. talk, especially like for the dates that they had on some of those. Right. It's like, no, this must have took them at least more than a week to get done because this shit is big as fuck. Yeah. And then, like, there was just, even some of them abstract type pieces, I know them shits took probably, like, days, maybe mm -hmm. weeks to get done. Then they had uh, certain TVs that showed the process of, like, the glass mm -hmm. type ones. Like, I always wanted to see that. And it's weird because it's, like, so hot. But then when they take it out, they're, like, molding it yeah. to a shape. Yeah. To a certain shape. And I guess I'm assuming it gets... They'll put it in something that's cold that it actually stay conformed to that shape. But the glass process in itself is dope. I always wanted to try that. Yeah. I think glass blowing is one of the craziest forms of art I've ever seen. Yeah. To form like a lamp or like a light filter yeah, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, like... But also Especially just with all the colors and shit facts. they put in it. Like, and it's just like glass, but then they roll it into like glitter and shit like that. And then they drop it back in the fire and then... Have to blow it through this damn pipe pause and fucking like it's just like yo, bro. It's it's crazy just to see art. You know what I mean? So many different ways, so many fashions, bro. I love it though. Yeah. Love it. So it's so, it's just so many different forms and shapes of art, man. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy how much time people dedicate to that shit. Mm -hmm. Like you really be amazed by some of the shit people put together, man. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Like I think if. Like I'm really that's what I'm really anticipating. Well, I know it's not strictly art, but like just museums in general. I'm ready for the African American Museum to get here, man. I'm just intrigued to see what they're gonna have in there. Yeah, that's that's what I want to see more than anything. You said where they're gonna have it? No, what, what they have. Oh, what, what they what have they in it. Be displaying in there. <laughs> but like we pretty much I I think pretty much they're gonna have the basics that we know as far as black history. But I wanna know if they're gonna get into like shit that we really, really don't know about. Yeah, because I want to go into it actually learning some new Black history. That's what I really want to go into it for. But you went to the one in DC, right? No, I didn't go. My parents went to that. Yeah, one. you keep telling me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mom went to that one. I heard the one in DC is real dope, though. That is. From what she told me, it was fire. A lot of them in DC. A lot of museums are dope, dope in DC, and they free as fuck. I wonder if. I wonder when they um, finish building up that area by Tenga, how else they're going to expand that area, especially being that it's close to the airport and shit. Because I'm noticing, like, they're really building up a lot of these. Like, Palmetto Commerce is far from done. That oh, area yeah. over there, that shit far from yeah, done. It's a, a lot of fucking land over there. It's a there. lot of land they get knocked down over there. And I actually think they got some land. They got a landfill over there. Mm. Like, for trash and shit. Mm -hmm. I think they got one over there, a spot over there. But just to see how much how much this shit has grown, Tough Golf definitely about to be the spot. But what else is supposed to be in that front area? That whole thing will be Tough Golf. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about uh, by uh, in front of the Coliseum. They got construction going on for that. Mm, I don't see that. Yeah, because that's more on the backside behind a uh, fan zone and yeah. shit. But if you come more to the front towards the front of the Coliseum, they got that whole area cleared out too for construction. Oh, I did see that. You I, see I don't know what they're putting right there though, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. 
I know, man. Top Golf definitely gonna be lit when it's open, though. Yeah, that shit hard though. I that's, fuck with it just for the game be, itself. That shit gonna be packed. Yeah, that shit definitely gonna be packed, especially anyway, when it first opened. Anyway, they got a bar in it too. That shit gonna be packed. They food is a one. Like, oh, say, man, you go fuck with that shit. That shit is a one, dog. I definitely fuck with that shit. But um, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody from uh, Generation Z this week. And I was kind of talking about how I feel like their generation started the uh, jump from job to job type mental as far. Because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, if a job not serving me, you know, I'm going to just leave. But I kind of feel like it's because for me personally, I was never raised like that. I was taught that like longevity at jobs is beneficial for you on your resume. Because, you know, it's so crazy. I was having a conversation with a second level manager. And they was telling me about this hiring process they had, and he was talking to this dude, and he was like, you know, man, I'm thinking about leaving, you know. He basically chasing love and shit. So he was upset that he didn't get an interview. So he had a conversation. He was like, man, why would you put me through that shit? And he was like, what you mean? He was like, you know, I'm going to have to go through this whole, you just told me that you was thinking about leaving in three months. So why would I put you in this position? You leave, then I'm gonna have to go through the whole. I'm gonna have to put a whole yeah. new wreck out. I'm gonna have to put a go through this whole hiring process. I'm gonna have to put somebody else in the same position, all because I'm just looking out for you. And it kind of brought the shit full circle with me because it's like I'm against people leaving jobs that's not beneficial to them. You know, it might be fucking with them mentally, you know, financially, whatever the case may be. But I think people have became comfortable thinking that. Uh, history or longevity at a job don't matter because if a job if a job comes if you looking for the next job right and you know they looking at your job history like let's just hypothetically say the reason why you didn't get the job is because you jumped from job to job versus the other person who kind of have like a lengthy you know tenure at at jobs but because you jump from job to job that might be the reason why you didn't get it because you know, let's say in six months you might leave, and we don't really feel like filling this position again in six months. No, I can see that. I think uh, it, I feel like any any like job hiring or anything like that is, is case by case. But I do get your point though, because a lot of people they don't like you said they're not trying to go through that shit a few months down the road. Like a lot of people do want people that's going to be locked in there for at least. At least, at least two to three years, like before they try to like move somewhere else, like you know what I'm saying. So, cause that is that is a tenuous process of putting that out there, finding finding eligible candidates for one, cause that's that's hard. Mm-hmm. Then you gotta like then then you gotta train them, all kind of shit. Like, so I get it, but a lot a lot of these on the, on the flip side of the coin, dog, a lot of these jobs are bullshitting though. Like, so I get both sides of the argument. I never been one to just jump job to job to job. If I get a job, I try to stay there as long as I can. E- even if even if I don't really like it like that, I'll try to stick around, see if shit turn around a little bit. But you're right though. This new generation, they do. It is like a they treat this shit like a free agency kind of like. That's right. Yeah. It's always like hey, like they've they got a job, they'll get a new job, and already looking at some look at some other places just in case that one don't. Uh, fit into their liking is like, bro, you just got here, like you know what I'm saying, like. But I get it though. I get both sides. So how do you, how do you, how do you think that it affects? Do you think that's due to just all the financial opportunities, or people just like, you know, man, the it's moment that if I'm having a bad day, I'm quitting this shit. Because that's what I really be seeing. Like it's, people it's, it's be a having a that. bad day it's, it and they that. quitting that shit. It's a lot of that. They getting themselves into these jobs where they can't, where they never. uh they never experienced some of the uh the stress, not even like stress, but more like workloads that they not they might not be used, used to. to. And instead of just working like, you know, just sticking through it, they'll just quit the shit. But a lot of people that I see in doing it, because I do see a lot of people doing it, is it's more for financial gain, though. Know? Mm-hmm. I'll never argue that. Yeah, I'll never argue but, that. You know, the whole like just getting to a job and you might have Got to something you weren't you weren't used to. That's the point of like you know coming to a new situation to learn something else. Or, yeah, you got to be adaptable. You, know, you got to be adaptable. So, you know, I don't I, I don't. Agree I just with feel that. like people underestimate um, 
in terms of your resume history with jobs and the longevity yeah. with jobs. Not saying if something doesn't benefit you, you're not supposed to leave. But I think people have really been comfortable. And I think it really started with Generation Z. And I think it might be due to the other financial opportunities out here. Or they might not just be accustomed to wanting to, you know, kind of go through the ups and downs of yeah. a job. Because once they feel something, it's like, oh, I'm out. But I feel like, and based off of the conversation that I was having with a second level manager, it's like, if if I put out a job and yet you're telling me you might not be here in three months, why are you upset with me because I didn't give you the job? You're basically telling them that you're going to be gone. You're going to be gone. Like so that. why would you want to put somebody through that process? I think that's something that people should look uh, look at more of. Not saying that, you know, due to whatever circumstances, but I think that job longevity matters in terms yeah. of your resume. But I feel I, like it does. I think a lot of these jobs got to start asking themselves too, especially if they got like high turnovers, like... A lot of these jobs don't get to the root cause of why they have high Why turnovers. they have, yes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just like, all it's right. It's two we'll, sides of the coin. Yeah, all right. We'll just fill it in. Like, it don't matter. We'll just keep filling this position in. And they never really get to the to the root cause of why people are people in and out. People in and out. Like, I think uh, employee retention is kind of kind of trash these days, too. So, I mean, I get, I get both sides. I think I think it's always gonna boil back to money, but I think a lot of time it be the work environment it be, itself. It be work environments. It be that like, like if you're not showing the people that you at least give a damn, like you're not going, you're not going to get. The, Where's the motivation? Where to come the motivation in? to come in? Or labor I'm, loss would be I'm high come, as fuck. I'm gonna come in, but it's like I'm not going. I'm not gonna bust my ass with you. <laughs> I'm gonna coast. I'm gonna coast on through. I'm gonna coast on through. I'm yeah, get this eight hours of and I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not about to, you know. It's, it's not, the morale it's aspect. It's the morale. It's the morale aspect. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, like, you don't even you don't even thank people every quarter. Like a quarter, like three months now. It's not that's not hard to just be like, hey, like, you know, pass out some, you know, some gift cards, some sustainable gift cards at that. Like three months, like y'all y'all make money hand over fist. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like just give back something. You know what I'm saying? Like shit like that means something. People be like, all right, like. You know, I got this coming. I got that coming. Like they, at least, I'm, I'm motivated to yeah, clock at least, in. At least they show they give a damn. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's like. Or if you breaking certain records at certain jobs. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like y'all know that we 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 busting our ass in here. Like you know, show us shows that you see it at least. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't. A lot of a lot of jobs don't do that, and they they still expect you to just come in and and you know give your best every day, like. They don't. They don't understand. Like people are still humans at the end of the day. Like yeah, we work for you. I work for you, but you know what I'm saying. Like it's two sides to it's it. It's two sides. It's two sides to it. Because I'm telling you, boy, they get the and I see it all the time on social media. It's like yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> then about four or five months, they out of that one too. And it's like it's 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 a lot of factors. You know what I'm saying? Every situation, everything is case by case. Everything is case by case. So somebody tell me about Amazon, you ain't even got to explain that shit to me. I already yeah. know what time got, it is with that. I got large enough samples, sample yeah. size data for that. So. Oh. But, um, yeah, man, that shit, uh, <laughs> especially when people start to get in on strike and shit. But some people, and what make it worse, some people don't really have a choice but to stay yeah. At at their current situations, that'd be another thing that I think people should be rewarded for. The too. job search not the job search not plentiful for everybody. No, it's not. So. Especially depending on where you stay at. Yeah. Like you know what I was reading the other day too about a lot of tech jobs. Them shit saying what it's all cracked up to be. It's I got a homie who do that shit. That nigga said he was in there from like eight a.m. to about twelve you be right at back. night. You gotta be right back at eight a.m. And possibly got like he was literally there for the whole weekend. But they have it set up to where the tech job places are basically like home. So they have like cafeterias and shit. Mm-hmm. They make it to where you basically you yeah. don't really have a choice to go home. Yeah. They, they kind of they kind of they got lounge areas, and lounge shit. areas and all type yeah. of shit. The tech jobs ain't really with people cracking yeah. the like. I was re- I saw a, this. A, it's a high burnout rate. It's a high burnout rate. People say you know the benefits are there, but it's like. At I what, really ain't got no what, life. Really, yeah, really, at what cost was you really, you know? That's the, that's another thing. Like, when you do jobs like that, you got to make sure the work work to personal life balances is, is, is up to par, too. Because that is you, the money's there. The mm-hmm. money's there when you get those jobs. Is, is at what cost are you getting for that, for that salary, though? If I get to a point like that, I would... Map out a plan to where I'm out in the X amount of months so I can save. Yeah, that's that the thing too. A lot of people get into these jobs with no plan. 
Yeah. Every job is not going to be your career. Because if I feel like it's burning me out, all right, yeah. let me stack extra amount of what, money. What, how long can I do so this I can quit. So I can get yeah. up out of here, get up or, out yeah. here man. Because a lot, and I was surprised at the burnout rate for the for the tech jobs, but it's oh, high man, as fuck. Shit. Some of those jobs will have a, a huge workloads. Huge workload. And a lot of people don't like, of course, we in a time now where people don't even want to go back to the offices. Mm-hmm. People are still burnt out at home. And people are leaving their jobs and they say, you know, they'll call them back. They had a new job and they'll call them and be like, yo, you sure you don't want to come back and do this? And they be like, nah, I'm cool. Like, you got to, it got to be some give and take with a lot of this shit. I never wanted to be the type to, I never subscribed to that, you know, always work, no sleep type shit. And I think that falls under that umbrella. And people will be like, oh, you know, people who get money don't really sleep. Man, listen, that's a lie. Man, that's a lie. That's the biggest lie. And a lot of people is getting that's, money, they, getting they they eight hours. Y'all. They yeah, tricking, they tricking y'all. y'all to they think that y'all. you got to really run your body in the ground. Because what is your body beneficial to you if you're not getting like no this, rest? Like that's, I always think about that Steve Harvey clip when he was like, if you... If you get up at uh, what do you say? If you get no, up you at, say if you sleep eight hours a day. Sleep, yeah. yeah, he said he said both. He said if you sleep eight hours, you is the time. If you're not yeah. getting up at four p.m. No, four a.m. or some he shit said, like if you, that. If you get up at seven, because he said the stock market opened yeah. up at nine a.m. on the East Coast yeah, or something like, like that. Yeah. If, you, if you get up at, at eight a.m., you done you done missed half the day already. I was like, nigga, what? Yeah. Nah, bro, we not. I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, bro. That works for you. And uh, you know, I think with the economy, the jobs need to be more sensitive to what's going on out here. That's another thing. That's that it all. It all comes down to like you know. This is really not 2010 no more. Yeah. And I think a lot of them, even when we was looking at 2010, they were thinking it was still 2000. I think on on a consistent basis, every 10 years, a lot of this shit is changing. Mm-hmm. A lot of this shit is. It might be 15, but in between that 10 to 15 year window, that shit is changing. It's not. I what saw, it used to I be. I saw a graph where it was basically like saying like fifteen dollars and fifteen dollars in uh, two thousand ten was the equivalent to making twenty dollars an hour in two thousand twenty. <laughs> as far I as believe like, that, yes. As far as like what the economy is that. and shit, like they were saying, like yeah, it's like one hundred percent, bro. Twenty dollars an hour is not really getting you. It's it's not really doing much for you. It's not. Like twenty dollars an hour. So let me do the math. So if you that's forty one k. If you was making, if you was doing forty one k in two thousand ten, you was actually it's pretty good. It's pretty straight. Like it's you know what straight. I'm saying. But now it's like fifty. You more than straight. Fifty. You kind of like eh, you might have to get a second job. Yeah. I mean, you cool, but but forty thousand in twenty twenty two. No, sir, you're not doing nothing with that. You have to have a second job if you're making or you twenty thousand. You gotta have a situation where like you with somebody like both of y'all making forty thousand. That's so 80, 80, 80, 80 racks. In the household. Like, it's, that's not bad. That's like, not bad at all. That's not bad at all. And I think a lot of people need to get into that mental, too. There's nothing wrong with teamwork, man. Contrary to popular belief of what y'all believe on social media, there's nothing wrong with that. I see that shit every day. I see it in my neighborhood. <laughs> talking to neighbors, talking to different people. Like, people really do have plans put in place. Like, I remember I was talking to my one, one of my neighbors, and it was talking about the, the process of him and his wife getting the home. And how they have, like, that shit really was, like, that shit was mind-blowing at how they really was on the same page and how they got to that shit. Yeah. But see, if you if you just confine yourself to what you see people talk about on the TL all day, you would think none of that shit exists for real. Yeah, because, you know, I think what a lot of it is, too, the economy has made it to where people feel like they got to do it by themselves. and But they'll shun the teamwork yeah, they'll aspect. they shun the teamwork because it's looked at as... You're not really contributing what you think you are, but in actuality, you're two heads is better than one. Two heads better than one, like you know what I'm saying. So y'all can play, y'all can play like y'all rich, but and everybody, everybody's situation different. Like if you single and you have a great job and you fit the bill by yourself, then cool. But in a lot of situations, it's nothing wrong with getting with somebody and y'all really putting. I think a lot of that shit is pride, though. Yeah, I think a lot of it's pride. It's I don't pride, think a lot of people want to look at ego. somebody it's and for that shit. be like, oh, what I look like. Doing this, I want to do this, but I'm like, bro, like, y'all really do some powerful shit together. If you put away the ego and you, that other person is, is what you might need. Facts, facts. But it's especially with these times, man. It's it's good to see gas continually going down. Drew, that shit three forty something now around my way. So for reg, so y'all y'all said by by uh, by Thanksgiving there was gonna be two something. Did y'all say Thanksgiving or New Thanksgiving Year's? Thanksgiving for me was $3 with Drew a few months ago. 
right. But Thanksgiving, I don't know what it'll be. It might Shit. be. It should be in the twos. It should be. Shit, it might. It was already three forty now. Cause, cause to be real, bro, I feel like gas should be maintaining in between one seventy five, two fifty for regular. Yeah. I it would, should never eclipse two fifty. That's just my opinion. I, my soul was smile of, of gas was one seventy five tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's about three forty something now, somewhere around there. You can fill your tank up, but damn, you're twenty five. One seventy five, and everybody needs gas. Like that's they, another. It's a necessity. Yeah, one hundred. That's not a want. That's I saw one. Greg and uh and George talking about that on Sneak this, and Greg he was like, yo, like. You're basically at, at at these people mercy, like you. It's like getting gas is not a. a, a it shouldn't be a life decision. Yeah, when but, I go to the pump. But, but I mean, people are making hey, like they sacrificing, like hey, I'm gonna get, I gotta fill my tank up, so something gotta get cut out. Of the, of or the, they might just put five ten in there. Yeah, I mean, but that ain't to me. I never really. I mean, if you that's all you got, that's all you got. I'm not going. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean. I never got like the whole putting five or ten in at a time because you gonna be right back at the pump. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like I'd rather put in, you know, my twenty five, my thirty, and then keep it moving. Like I'm, it, 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 it'll, it'll, it'll stretch your time up uh, in between you going back to the gas station. But yeah, like, like how Greg was saying though, like, like it's, it's not like a. a it's not an option. Like you need gas. Like you don't. You yes, just you need it. You just can't. Can't be go like, without. You just can't be like, uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ride my bike to this date. No, nigga. Like you. You're going to get to. You. You need to go get the gas. Like you know what I'm saying. So it's it's it's. And everybody crazy. can't afford a Tesla. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everybody can't afford these 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 basic eco cars. Like so. It's like you know. You at you at these people mercy, man. The shit. The shit so wild is that. I didn't understand how how really expensive Teslas are. This shit averaging like 70, 60, bro. Mm-hmm. You ain't getting no Tesla for about no 40 or under, bro. Mm-mm. And if you do, that shit is old. That shit's on its last leg. Battery about to fry. Yes, sir. That computer system ain't right in that shit. That shit's been compromised. 100%. I stepped on Teslas for 40K. But I mean, you, you know, if you get a Tesla for like, Business purposes, I I say that'd be like your best route, just because you can write that shit off. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, or if you're looking to go electric, you know what I mean, looking into any kind of avenues with that. But I think it's it's going to be a necessity within like the next ten years to probably go electric, some type of electric. Are they trying mm. to Are they trying to get people to uh, to do that though? Like as far as to mm-hmm. cut like emissions down and all that. And they should. You you see yourself like. Holding on to the beamers as long as you can, or oh, they got electric beamers. They just dropped the i seven concept. Was that you who DM me that? Mm-hmm. No, that was my boy Royce. He sent me that shit. That, yeah. Man, that shit fires a motherfucker <laughs> clean. The the back you can recline. Yeah, the back seat. Yes, the, the i seven, which is you know the seven series, is like the big luxury, big. It's a big, big, big car. luxury. Those are the bigger cars. Yeah. Those are the bigger ones though. So this is like so they got an electric. They got an electric seven series. I, I, I didn't know they had an electric i seven though. It's it's a concept right now. Oh okay yeah, okay, but. I mean, they got touch touch button. The doors open all the mic. It, it gives a lot of Royce Royce vibes. Two tone colors, big ass. Well, I mean, it doesn't have the big body. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Just, the seven series is always you can be recline in the back seat, yeah, bro. Is. Like <laughs> this shit is big as fuck, bro. That shit hard. I I, I saw one yesterday, Drew. It was like a, a burgundy type with yeah. a with a tan. Yeah, two yeah, tone. Yeah. yeah, that shit was fire. Cream inside. Mm-hmm. That shit was fire, bro. I'm never doing cream in the inside again. But I feel it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I just I'm not. I've been good with mine so far. I'm not. I'm not a like a. I'm a sweats guy, but I wear jeans also. You know what I mean? Jeans mm-hmm. and fucking cream don't go at all, bro. Especially in Charleston, where you can have a storm that comes out of absolutely nowhere. Now your 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 jeans are bleeding on your damn. Oh, this is hard. On your um your sheets. This shit look big as hell too. Yes, yeah, it's, it's huge, bro. Pause. I fuck with it, man. I'm looking at this shit now. Matter of fact. Yeah, that's hard. I like that. And the shit, the shit, like this this color is just look at that shit. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. But you know, with the with the rise of technology, man, I even be surprised at what cars are equipped with now, like that make it easier. Yeah, you we get to a point now where everything would be. You think that's kind of like making us lazy in a sense? 
I feel like it's 50 50. I feel like it's it's convenient. It could kind of fuck with your mental depending on the person. But think, convenience is always is always going to be number one when it comes I think to when shit. When it comes to driving, like I don't mind, um, I don't mind added convenience when it comes. I, to I driving. agree with that. I agree with that. I would even like to get to a point where I could chill in that bitch like yeah. iRobot, yeah, like I Will Smith on iRobot. I don't mind added convenience when it comes to driving. I think that would actually cut back on on reckless driving. I think that will. I think that will too. Especially with now with the features with the driving assist, because yeah. if you get out that lane, down. boy, that shit will It'll, shake yeah, on your that's ass. What I'm yeah. Like shit like that keep people on. I think that keep people more on point. So. My cousin be wilding in his Tesla like this. This nigga just say, like he just be ripping. Nigga, this nigga be just fucking rolling up and letting the car do his thing. <laughs> this nigga just. Be, <laughs> this nigga's a madman. I did see one. Uh, somebody had posted it. Yeah, because Tesla's really dry themselves, mm-hmm. don't they? <laughs> no hands. Not the smoking a block. He on the he on the interstate? Yep. <laughs> I'm mad at that though. I'm mad, uh, bro. And they roofs is fire, bro. Yeah, no that facts. that glass, that glass roof, that shit fire. But they all come with panoramic roofs like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all come with that shit. Jesus. I, nigga pushing through that shit. No hands. And no hands. <laughs> I remember I was watching. That shit one. floating too. Yeah. <laughs> Sick that shit idiot, floating. Bro. I remember I saw it. the first time I saw it was a few years back, and dude had a cream interior. I never forget. He was on the interstate, and this nigga literally he had to zoom. He zoomed out the camera, and Dog literally was just, and the Tesla was just doing this thing. Yeah. I was like, oh no, that shit here. I got to get one of these bitches one day. That shit hard. Yeah, I saw this um, this guy. He got pulled over by, well, it's by two officers, but apparently like the. The car would tell you, "Hey, we feel that you're falling asleep or some shit like that," and like it'll. Pull That's it. good too. That's yeah, good too. It'll, yeah, it'll pull itself over or whatever. So you. Oh, gotta, for real? Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah. that's dope. So the nigga, was people on, will fall asleep at the wheel, especially driving at night. And so he got pulled over by a cop, and it was like, "Yeah, we got reports of you sleeping while the car was driving, this and this and that." And it's like, this is the second time we've been called over to you. Clearly, you hey, to that. be honest, I think they should implement something in cars that oh, like so- dispatch. To like police or something mm-hmm. that this person is falling asleep. I'm not against that, bro. Nah, I mean, it save your life. Nah, facts. Anything can malfunction, and if you're not there to catch it, bro, if you're fucked, then you can fuck up a, a whole highway. Pile but the up. fact that it pulls over, mm-hmm. that's fire. Yeah. Because yeah. your shit can pull over, and you can just wake up, and you get back to driving again. Yeah. Put that shit right back. On. <laughs> yeah, put that shit right back on auto. But sleeping while it's autopilot, I'm that's not just, with that. I'm no, I wouldn't that. do that. Because you can't control nobody else. Or my mom always taught me, you just don't drive for yourself. Yeah. You drive for other people. Like, right. I almost seen an accident happen yesterday. Because it's like, look at this. Like, this motherfucker was such in a rush. And swerved in front of the semi. Semi damn near had to slam on brakes. And that could just be a domino effect. It's like, see, you can't always just drive for yourself. You got to drive yeah. for other people. That's the most important part of me. Very true. That shit hard though with your cousin though. That yeah, shit, that, nigga, that shit fire. He be fucking wildin', bro. But I be telling him he need to be careful. But you know, niggas with a Tesla, bro. What can you tell him? Not a damn thing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. <laughs> but I will say, like when it comes to these vehicles, as life is progressing for me, um, there are certain things that I want in a vehicle, like inside, as far as like electronics and stuff like that. But my next vehicle will have massage chairs built into this fucking shit, bro. <laughs> Are you telling, always telling me about that? Nigga. But a lot of the BMWs already have it, right? Um, a few. You can. I mean, most of them you have to get like custom and stuff. But I know for a fact the X7 has them. So that's just more of a reason. Oh, that's more of a reason X7. for you to get the X7. Yeah. yeah so, um, but yeah, and it's actually gonna have like the rolling balls and that shit. I don't give a fuck as long as that shit does what that damn. King Ranch did, as long as it could do something similar to that. Did it have the balls in it, or it was something different? No, it was like sitting at, like, Planet Fitness or in the the massage chair, coming from lower behind and all the way up your back. I feel like that's that's something that should have been implemented in cars years. I'm talking about 10 plus years ago. Wow, facts. I feel like that's something that should have been in cars. Especially, well, I... I feel for like truck drivers because they really are on the fuck. Like their job the is, time. is yeah. to sit the fuck down sit and drive. Sit down and drive all day. I mean? So, of course, you know they've always had the like the the massager outline that you can put with the you know plug in your cigarette plug, lighter yeah, and yeah. shit like that. That ain't really ain't never really ain't hit the full like experience, that. Nah, so, yeah. that shit not effective. Nah, like that, ain't, that shit just be more aggy than anything. Yeah. Like if you ain't using that shit, it's just in the way. You know, you can feel the damn little balls in your back pulse. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. 
But yeah, nah, nothing like that was in that King Ranch. But that definitely is something I heated seats, uh, cooler seats. I mean, that's a necessity here in Charleston, definitely. Um, but just you know, little gadget gadgets, little Bluetooth. You know, I ain't really crazy on shit. You know, as long as it my don't t- take much to satisfy me facts, with a car. Are you a cloth interior or leather? Leather. I ain't doing no cloth, bro. So you don't even like cream leather interior? I don't mind it. It's just not for me. It's not for you. Mm-mm. No, I uh, and my my first BMW I had a 740i M Sport and it had the um, it had beige interior, and that it was fucking impossible, bro. One one spill drink, bro, and your shit's fucked. It's crazy because I don't really had too get much that shit detail. Yeah, I don't really had too much people in mind, so I usually just clean my drivers. I use, I clean my own seats, mm-hmm. and you know the shit that I use it on a but it's done. I don't feel like I really... Because I had cream material for the Camaro, mm-hmm. but it was cloth. Mm-hmm. And for those seven years, I did a good job of maintaining that shit. Yeah. And that's the thing. You know, like, self-care with yourself, you have to have self-care with your car, too. 100%. You know I mean? So it's it's just one of those things. Like, like I can't, like my car might, might look dirty on the outside because I'm always driving around and shit, bro. But inside, there's no clothes. There's no shoes. There's yeah, no I don't know, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, My backseat is empty. Bro, my backseat be women, empty. A lot of women ride like that, bro. Like, their cars be in another closet damn near. Like, yeah, especially the trunk. Oh, my God. The trunk. <laughs> yeah. That's the first closet. That's the first I closet. Like, <laughs> I don't like congested cars, bro. Nah. Like, we already, like, in a confined area. Yeah, confined like, space, yeah. If I got to take out... Your whole closet to get to your spare tire to help you change your tire, bro. I have a problem with that. I kind of see why your tire flat right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole body in the back. You got a whole, whole body in the back. You you've been ignoring a lot of signs prior towards this tire going out that you called me for. So I, it's the evidence be right there. Like, yeah. Yo, I, gotta, me, I gotta let, keep my car clean. Let bro. me ask y'all. Now, say you're helping a girl, say like, you know, she's ch- you need changing of a tire or some shit, and all them clothes and shit, it's like supposed to be like taken to the laundry room or some shit like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, do you, would you be like, yo, like, yo, if you need to use my washing machine, washing and dryer, bro, I got you. Like, if you know somebody going to a laundry mat, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Would you offer up your house to be like, oh, you know, you can it depends wash. how close my house is. Hold on. So this you, you're saying this is a situation where I'm helping uh, helping somebody tire? else, and you know that damn like you okay like clearly these clothes I'm hoping going to the laundry they're just, they're just not just fucking sitting in your your fucking. But that's truck. the thing too. I don't want to like I don't want to like assume that these clothes yeah. need to be washed. But I mean, the top <laughs> clothes, bro. <laughs> But a lot of people ride around like that. Like they ride around with trunks of clothes, and I mean bags of clothes and shoes and shit. Like, but see, when I think of that, I think it's like you're going to the laundry mat, bro. Because yeah. why the fuck else would you have like? I mean, I get it, especially like in Charleston, like t-shirts and shit. I can understand that. Like, I can understand keep like a book bag with like a yeah, a, a, like a, 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 a night bag or an emergency fit, emergency in fit like in that, that shit because some damn, just ride around with like garbage bags of clothes and shoes and shit, and I'd be like, bro, what are you doing, bro? Are you going to the laundromat? Or not, are you bro? okay? <laughs> yeah, no. Are you okay? No, like, what's mm-hmm. going on? But would y'all offer like help, like in there, like to help clean up their shit? Like, yo, bro, you should. I, I would have had to know that they was already en route to the laundromat or they was planning on getting that shit washed already. I just mm. didn't want to be like, hey, you, you need to wash your clothes? Because then they'd be like, nigga, my clothes already washed. And then I'd be like, oh, all right, my bad, brother. Like, hey, why are so much clothes in your car? <laughs> all these clothes can't be clean. That's man. what I'm saying. Like, it's crazy, bro. Anyway, I just, I just, I ask, you know. I've done that before. And, you know, the person who, um, it was their fucking winter clothes, bro. And it's, it's like, all right, man. All right, like that's a mad thing. It's summer, bro. Yeah, yeah. You how long these? How long have you been riding around with winter clothes to get washed? Like months, months. It, that's crazy to me. We like, we talk about that. I fuck up the scent <laughs> in your shit too. Yeah, the clothes. Yeah. The clothes smell like the car now. That's what I'm saying. Who wants to, it? Smells like like an attic furniture yeah. or some shit. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Like, nah. have you tried that uh, new that new car wash on Latin? No, I've been there. Five dollar shit. I might try it out today. That one right there by the Krispy Kreme. By the Krispy Kreme. Yeah. I might try it out today. I haven't tried. I'm gonna go get my car wash today. Yeah, I need to do the same. I'm gonna try it out though. I haven't had a chance. They to added one there. on 17. Um, so they had a, well, it was already there, but now they have like the five dollar deals and shit on it. Um, I'm gonna go check that shit out too because the outside of my car is just. Mm-hmm. It looks better when it's it's silver, like silver. And silver. I like a vacuum, boy. I like my shit vacuum clean, like so. Ain't like and I don't really got a vacuum too much, 
But you know, so it, more so on the driver's side. Yeah. But other than else, I don't really have to worry about the back, the passenger like that. So I bought a portable um, vacuum cleaner, which was like fifty. I've been meaning to invest in one of those for yeah, a long man. time. Back should be on I got the, uh, all the, the I got the portable uh, shit for the flat tire shit, the air pump. Yeah, yeah. I got that, but. That's also that might be a good investment. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of paying them boys two dollars some places. Hey, you know what I want to ask y'all? What's a good portable speaker? I feel like them JBL shit batteries be ass, bro. That web right there, you see that big. I just one? got another one, but if this one give a, mm. I feel like you know they always say like twelve hour battery life. I feel like when I charge that shit, it feel like it just be killing the battery, killing red. Cause I swear I just charged the shit the other day, and then that shit was flashing red this morning. When I use them portable batteries, I just go ahead and get like a um like a cord and just plug it up to a wall or something. Or unless we use one of them, them shit going platinum. Because right I got I got a speaker right now in my in my living room that's connected to my TV. But like the portable one that you could put, like if you in the shower or some shit, you want to listen to music. It seems like them JBL shit be giving out early, man. Yeah, they um one is probably you're overcharging it. Like when if it, when it's fully charged, take you that shit take off. Take shit off immediately. Two. The charging port that you're using, if you're using like an iPhone charging port or Android I'm using charging. a JBL one. Oh, that it comes with? No. Okay. They yeah. just give us the cord. Exactly. But with that, you need to charge that shit like maybe on like like a cable box or something that doesn't have too much power coming through it. Because so basically can, like the outlet that they provide in your house with just the, uh, the USB shit. That would work. So just use the USB don't use outlet. A, don't use a block because I've been using okay. blocks this whole time. See, the block will short your shit out yeah. though. It's too powerful. Yeah, oh, for real? Is, Hell yeah. yeah. That's probably why if it's, it's putting, hot when it's, it's charging. If it's putting too much power in it, it ain't gonna it's, the yeah. battery not gonna be worth it. And most most shit would tell you like don't use powerful blocks. Get a, like a block. From so the is that why they don't provide the block no more? They just provide the cord. No, nah, they just fucking ripping us off. Yeah, they bro. ripping us off. <laughs> that's just because if, if, if they was if they was providing like the 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 block and the cord, like that was basically all you need. Like mm-hmm. I think that on purpose, you keep buying shit, mm-hmm. man. Like, yeah, this is gonna be the last one I get though. Yeah, for sure. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna just use the USB outlet and yeah. see what it do. Yeah, do that. Because um, I do notice when I use the block, it's kind of hot. Oh yeah, you, but then when it's done. It's, it's cooled off. Yeah, but that's if it's hot, that means there's too much power being fucking pushed through that shit. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And not even to mention the cord. The cord doesn't have that much. It can't take that many watts. You see what I'm oh, saying? So the electrical okay. cord also can play a factor into that. That's why they say use something like like a regular block or fucking from the gas station. Like, you know, the fucking colorful blocks and shit. Yeah, because they, they don't come with the block. Mm-mm. They just come with the cord, but with I'll just cord. use the one I got in my kitchen. Mm-hmm. I got a USB outlet in my okay, kitchen, yeah. so yeah, that I'll was, use that. that would work. I wanted to ask y'all that because that shit was pissing me off. I'm like, bro, this shit's supposed to have way more life than it was, but that's probably what it's. Been. I've been using the block the whole time, yeah. and that block is from another JBL speaker, a oh, bigger one. Okay, it was from a it was from a one a previous one I had, yeah. and it was bigger. So this one's a little smaller. It's the flip. Yeah, yeah. I fucking surround. I think, um, like when it comes to those portable speakers, man. Think JP, JBL, depending on which one it is. Because they usually a good brand. Yeah. But I just been fucking up with the charging process, yeah. I guess. I had um I had a Beat pill when they were coming out with the pills and shit, I guess. Oh, good. Beats do got yeah. good speakers yeah. too. Yeah. I ain't never had a portable speaker from them, though. Yeah. Pills I just had the headphone. I had um, a Till one. It's somewhere. I don't know. Somebody got that shit, bro. I don't know where that shit is. I haven't seen that shit in like two years, but... Anyways, um, that I, I one's, might, that I might one's give me another pair of beats over there. I, I used to, them shit used to be very, I fuck with them shits in the gym, the over there headphones. But them AirPod Pros, boy, them shit, them shit get the job done. But I do miss them beats. I had some red ones, but the, the actual ear, like the, the soft part, that shit started peeling. And I got, so you got the one that's chargeable that came in a big ass case, or you had the solos, like. These are the solos. No, I got the bigger ones. That the come big with one, the charger. right, and the charger port. Into they come the with a charger port. Yeah. I have the same ones. They're white, and I opened them shit the other day, bro. Like the fucking shit is like sticking together. It's peeling so bad. It's peeling. Yeah, yeah, my shit was peeling. That's why I stopped using them. Yeah, I still got it though. Me too. I don't know what the fuck to do with it. I don't know what to do with it either. <laughs> shit. This shit peeling like a motherfucker. But the quality on that bitch is. I might just test it out today to just see if it still got the. The same knock on that shit. You know how like them fucking clubs be looking when you turn the lights on and them white couches ain't white and it's like pillin' and shit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how that shit look, bro. Shit pissed me off. You pay so much money for them shit. You probably get them shit off Amazon, can't you? I'm sure of it. 
them shit probably. But they got like the point. was your war, was yours Bluetooth though. Yes. Okay. Because I had the like, I guess I, mine's the first generation there because it was just a charging port, but you still had to have the cord that would mm-hmm. go to the phone and shit. Yeah. No shit was good though. I go for, but the main part pros get it done. They do. Especially with that spatial audio shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's another thing. I don't know if you was to get the, the new, because I'm pretty sure they make new ones every year with the Beats. Mm-hmm. Do they have that actual? I mean, I guess it would. It wouldn't matter what headphones you got if they still got it, right? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. it, it wouldn't matter. I think they got a. Well, is a Kim Kardashian Beats coming out now? Or some yeah, shit with like? the skin tone. Yeah, it's weird as fuck, bro. But anyways. Um, I'm glad you put me on point about that charger shit. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's so anything like even for this little watch right here, I use for a different app. Um, I noticed with iPhone it does it too, but mm-hmm. I always check the battery health, and my shit is still at ninety percent. Mm-hmm. So I ain't really tripping, but sometimes it get the kicking up. The lightning charger changed the game for iPhones or for any fucking phone for, to me personally. Like that little those little square blocks, bro. It takes like almost like. Half the day, damn near, at least like three hours to charge your phone fully, and that's without touching it. You know what I mean? Like, shit, the charging for the AirPod Pros is better than the phone. But I think for the phone, it's it, with me, I don't really have no complaints about the charging process. Like in the car, that shit. What, what kind of block do you use though? In the car or in the house? In the house. The same ones I've always been using. A little small square uh, cube. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't use them shit no more. I got them shit the fuck up out of there, bro. What like, you use then? Lightning chargers only. Yeah, people was fucking with them lightning chargers. Well, the lightning chargers, it still got a block, don't it? It's like yeah, a rectangle. It's, it's a rectangle. It's a rectangular prism versus a cube. Oh, man, them shit slow as fuck. You crazy. Nah, them shit fast. Well, maybe bro. I got the experiment again because yeah. I got one at the crib. Them shit fast, bro. Well, I, my phone could be on 1%. I plug that shit in for like five seconds. Literally for five minutes, I'll be at least at 30. Yeah, them shit get you up there quick. Let me try that shit when I get to the crib. <laughs> I'm telling you, dog. Because I still be using the block. Where I can I can be didn't charge my phone at all. Take a shower, get ready, and yeah, my. And I got the shit. wireless pad. Now that pad, that shit fire. Mm. I swear, I put that shit right on my nice uh, boom right here. I'm good. And I got that shit free when I actually got this one. But I'm gonna try that lightning cable shit. And it's the long rectangular one. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck with that. I'm gonna fuck with that. Yeah, it charged. I got one for my Oculus and I got one for my phone. So I got oh, okay, both lightning. Cool. You uh, lightning chargers. Word. So we had some new music come out Friday, and this is also the time of the year where a lot more projects come out. I feel like July is kind of like that slow month. Yeah. August, September, get here, more projects start to roll out. Uh, game drop. I know y'all was checking out that Peasy. Um, Meg drop. Rod Wave. Rod Wave, Wave drop. drop. That nigga Shaggy love Raw Wave. Shout out my nigga Shaggy. That nigga love Raw Wave. Too low vibrational for me, but a lot of people fuck with that shit. Yeah. So what you think about uh, PZ shit? I spent his shit a little bit. I wasn't really feeling it too much. I got to listen to the rest. I like it. It's the second half of that album is crazy. I fuck with that shit. How many tracks is it? I think it's like 21 songs. What's it called? Only Built for Diamond Links. Oh, I see what he did there. Yeah. That shit hard, though. I like I like that I like that whole basically majority of the album was fire to me like it was a it was a like the, on the first half um, he did do a little bit too much of the songs for the woman but I ain't complaining because he do got a large uh, female fan base but okay okay that shit that shit I like that album he put oh a lot of niggas fuck with Young Nudie shit too I'm gonna yeah, cut you off Nudie. no I listened, I listened to that this weekend too that shit was hard I ain't really a hard. Nudie fan that shit was hard he he uh he uh. He was switching up as far as like his flow, his flows. He did some. He he was experimenting with that. I, I like I like that. That was called uh, what was that shit called? EA Monster, I think. Yeah, EA Monster. But um, but yeah, the PZ album. A was bunch of songs from his album was flying in the chat. Yeah, oh, for real. <laughs> yeah, niggas fuck with Young Nudie. <laughs> nah, Nudie, Nudie, Nudie got that uh, he got that energy on his songs, but um. A lot of people still listening to that to that young boy album. That, that came out last week, but a lot of people still on that. A lot of people still listening to. Uh, nah, that's all I was really seeing. Just the young boy still going. Did you listen to the Meg album? I listened to Meg's album. How was it? It was actually pretty good. It was better than I expected. Um, she's being transparent about her feelings on this album. I will say that she do got her like you know her. Um, uh, just records. She just you know rapping, doing her thing, 
She got a track on there towards the end. It's called uh let me see. I got it right here. Mm-mm-mm. It's called Southside Royalty Freestyle with Sauce Walker. He that killed that, that shit. Donkey and all them on there. Yeah, all right. Killed that. But no, it's it's a, it's an overall good project. Come out the gates with NDA. That was good. Ungrateful with Key Lock. That was good. Uh, Not nice is is good. Budget with Lotto. That's good. Her is good. Right. Um, Who me with Pooh I actually like that. Scary with Rico Nasty. That was that was pretty good. This is actually her best project. And I think maybe because it's is like this, her. Is this an album or like no? This is an album. Okay. I'm just looking. This is 18 tracks. All right. You know, well before she was giving us like EPs and shit, kind of mm-hmm. short. I don't know. If she was considering them albums, but I think she really, she really. T- I could tell she took her time with this. You're gonna have a couple of your Lucys on there as far as like the party records or shit, some shit like that. But she got a pop record on there. Uh, I think called um, Sweetest Pie. That's the last track. Oh yeah, but, she she that song been out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I, honestly, she did a good job on this album. Right. I could tell that she 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 really took her time with this. And like I said, she's the 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 album title fits the the theme of the album. It's called uh Traumazine, uh Traumazine. So I fuck Meg did a good job on it. Hopefully, like with her record label situation, that gets hashed out because you know it is fifteen on one certified, three hundred release, so um and they got it right there. 1501 certified LLC. So we already know what's going on with that. So hopefully, you know, she Carl, figures Carl that out. Want his, man. Yeah. But overall, it's a, it's a good album, man. I, I'm not even mad at Meg for this. She, I can tell that she really put her her now, best foot I, I effort saw, with I this. I saw some people trying to... I don't know if this <coughs> dude was Thank trolling you. or not or whatever, but he was, at, he was basically saying... Uh, I don't know where the comparison even came from, but mm-hmm. he was like, uh, do y'all think that... Uh, who do y'all think is the bigger star, Future or Meg? And then they was just saying how he was basically saying how um, he was using some really like crazy points to try to get this shit across. Uh, let me pull it up. This now. is better than Good News. I'll say that. Now, Good News was an album because that was 17 tracks. But I, feel, so I think up this, until that this, time, I think people regarded Fever as like her best project. Is this her sophomore album or like was this a... What is, I, I, you asking the wrong person. I can't keep up no more because she done had mixtapes, albums. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it's hard to really, it's kind of hard to gauge her uh, discography. But if you're saying the album good, I'm not I'm not here to argue that. Because people would consider Fever up until now like her best work. Right. That that's the one that came out 2019. Okay, so Buddy basically was saying like you have to be insanely delusional to think Future is a bigger star than Meg. Meg does commercials, she's in people's homes, she's in TV shows, getting placements in movies. It's not remotely close. Future not even a bigger star on Twitter. What what movie she's been in? I don't know what movie she's been. I know she was in P Valley last week. She's getting roles. I don't know about that. Unless I miss them. Unless I'm genuinely missing them. I haven't seen Meg get cast for no movies. But this is my thing, bro. It's She's like, not a bigger star in future. Like this album right here is projected to, to move forty thousand in the first week. That's I I just read that. Like okay, it's projected to do forty to fifty thousand. Future drops on a whim right now, and he does almost two hundred k. He did two shit. He did two. I think two forty. On a, for on I a, care for you. Okay, so it's like. I mean, uh, I never liked you. I never liked you. So it's like, I mean, and it's like, I mean, there's no disrespect to Meg because Meg's still figuring it out. Like she's a lot of people, she's still in a in an infancy stage in her career. Like Future was a Future been out since 2011, 2010. Yes, but he it it wasn't until 2015 when he was like an under took off. Superstar took off. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you couldn't really argue no more. He was a star to me already. Well, shit, he took off kind of 2012, 13, but well, he really DS2 was what like that was what did it. Like, yeah, like, that's this is what it is now. So it's like from since then, it's, it's been nothing but at least 80k first week, 100k first week. You know what that'd saying? be my thing with these fan bases. Like, are y'all here to just follow them and, and like the dude, the dude, go at go at people on social media, like, or do y'all really buy y'all artists' he's, music? He's saying he's saying. He's he made like some really elementary like statements. He was like a lot of which y'all gotta understand. There's a lot of Meg 
a lot of Meg fan base is not at album buying age yet. And I'm like, bro. That doesn't make you? sense because. That doesn't even make no. sense because kids buy future albums. First of all, I'm going to use an artist that, that fits the mold perfectly, Travis Scott. Travis Scott has a cult fan base as well, but they go buy they his go music. Buy his, like they, they go buy anything. Travis, his Scott. first week numbers are up. They're they're aligned with what they would do in a two thousand one, two thousand two, yeah. two thousand three first yeah. week type. Yeah, yeah. they're no, going yeah. to buy his music too. So that'd be my question with a lot of these. Travis would definitely with, be selling yeah. like hundred, two hundred thousand first week, like back then too. Bro, listen, what what what? Shh. No, but not even to say that he would at least do 300, 400 first week today. To say. To say her, but her, Meg's doing 40, 80, No, to say that her and this is what the machine behind her now. Yes, and I'm like, bro, like you can't say that her her base her fan base isn't that album buying age. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make sense. That no, it doesn't. doesn't make any sense. Her her most of her fan base is, is college. It's college and up. Like what college are you talking and up. About? What are you talking about? And they're streaming music. What are y'all talking about? The fan base just hasn't caught up to. I don't know, like the sales. The and sales, if you're on the city girl shit, you're 25 plus. That's what I'm saying. Like that, that just didn't make sense. Because Meg herself is 27. Yeah. So no, I can't subscribe to that. And that'd be my question for some of y'all. Do y'all really be buying y'all artists that you claim is you know music? Are y'all really going to get that shit? Because the numbers don't really reflect. And I know we don't put too much stock on the numbers, but the numbers have to account for something. Because regardless of the fact, Travis Scott is going to move when he drop. That's just what it is. Uzi? Yeah. Uzi did... What was that crazy number that he did first week 2019? I think it was like... Or 2020? I think that was like, what, 250? In a streaming era now. Not more. I think it was higher than that. It might have been. It might have been. I think it was 300 something. Let me see. Yeah, that nigga went crazy with that album. But y'all really loved that album. I remember the reception it got on the TL. Y'all was y'all was fucking with that heavy. This nigga said she's got Popeye's hottie sauce and all. Come oh, on, that's what they talking real. about. And I'm like, bro, like, does y'all forget that Future did a Gap commercial with Cher? All right, here we go. Eternal Take did 288K Almost first 300K. week. Almost 200K. The album earned 400 million US streams in his first week. His discography weird, too, because they say he only got two... Technically albums. Oh, and Meg only got two albums, technically. Uh, but that, good news in this one. That album came out like right after the um, a Meg album, right? This came out March 2020. But didn't a Meg album come out right before that? Or a project or whatever? I don't know what we calling it, but yeah, like... I have to look. Let me see. Because I been, I remember like people was like, hey, like she kinda, he kind of shut down a few people's albums. Sugar. That okay. was a little... Yeah, that was a little... March? Yeah. They came out same day. Yeah. He washed her. That shit didn't he even matter. He washed her. Yeah. That shit did not matter. And is that's what I'm saying. It's like, I mean, we he like the dude was basically trying to say like she's a worldwide star. And it's like, bro, like if if that's the case, then you know, when it comes down to her main her main product, which is the music, it would reflect that. Sugar you, did. You can't say that. You can't say that albums don't that, that albums don't the the sales don't matter when that's this is her main product. This is her main product. So it debuted at number ten and sold forty one thousand the first week. See, that's that's still on par for what that you said. That's this one's gonna do forty, right? Yeah. It so don't seem like to be like years, no improvement. It's two years later, and it's still we still doing the same units, but but she's supposed to be a, a bigger star than that. Doesn't people. make sense. And she's doing. She has more. She has a more of a machine than behind her than these other dudes do. That doesn't make sense. Not you know to me. Saying? And it I think a lot it of people... It's not translating. It's not translating at all. It don't work like that. You can't say that the sales don't matter in terms of stardom when that's the main product. That's what, And I was just about to transition into this next point because I think people have really lost because they get so caught up in with the numbers and quality comparison where they forget that how these fan bases really be accounted for. Like, something needs to be said for Prince and Michael Jackson to be in these millions... When at a time you had to go to a record store and yeah, buy these, so to. imagine today. Let's put Thriller in twenty twenty two. I'm I'm think we're talking about billions. Yeah, in Easy. terms of it, billions. Easy. If Easy. Drake can do a billion with Scorpion, as yeah. far as streams, we're and talking about multi billions with Prince and Michael Jackson. Drake, Drake is the perfect example because Drake sales always reflect his stardom. Bro, listen, he did six hundred thousand with CLB units. The streams was no matter how you crazy. feel about the album, but the units was six hundred. That's what I'm saying. No matter how you feel about the album, yeah. the sales and the sales gonna always reflect 
his stardom, his stardom. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, we talking about stardom here. You yeah. can't tell me, you can't tell me that Meg is this this star. She's bigger than Future, but the it's the numbers. The numbers don't translate that. When we talking straight stardom, not quality. Forty k in 2020 and forty k in 2022 projection. That's where's the the needles not there's being moved. No, there's no needle moving yeah. to say that she's a bigger star than established people. Yeah, you know then, what I'm saying? Yeah, like not Future. Sorry. It don't it don't work like that. You can't bring up a nigga having her own Popeye's condiment as a as a point here. That don't make that don't make sense. Future just did GQ this 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 year with no album out. Well, the album Yachty has Sprite, Target, all this shit. He's not moving like that. Records wise. Record wise, yeah. And we're in an age now where a lot of these collabs are going on. No disrespect, but what does that have to do with your stardom as what far as music? To do? I just I look at like collabs like that as just that's that's more of a more, the name. It's, it's a promotional tool more than anything. Promotional tool, and the name might be hot, but like, but we're talking stardom niggas. You need to be you need to be selling shit, bro. You need yeah. you're 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 now that was my biggest right with with Thug because I feel like Thug is a star, but I couldn't really put him up there because I've been saying him. You here. asked that question before, uh, yeah, yeah. Like the like the 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 sales ain't been in translating to that when we look at his first week numbers. Yeah, so Future did two twenty five first week. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So it's like we can't really, we can't really do, we can't do this, bro. Like, and Meg got millions of dollars being pushed behind her as far as like, you know, her machine and shit like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, if, I feel like if you got, if you're, if you, if you're telling me all these things she do outside of music, bro, she mm-hmm. should be selling no less than at least a hundred thousand first week. You got to be higher than that if you put them with Future. It, it, you got to because when you even like with Kendrick Lamar, right? Kendrick did two ninety five first week. And that's equivalent to what the big time like Kanye did. What three forty? Four year hiatus now. What did, what did Kanye do? I think Kanye, did three forty or yeah, something it was like three forty. So if you want to if you want to talk about star, then you have to that has to you have to be in that range. You gotta be two hundred. You gotta up. be you gotta be two hundred it up. Two hundred it up, bro. I can't even say a hundred. Forty thousand independent niggas doing forty thousand the first week, bro. Yeah. Like that's like. No disrespect, I don't know exactly what uh what Westside Gun latest album did, but I'm pretty sure he cleared forty thousand. Westside, let me see. That latest album that Westside just dropped, Westside Gun. I'm pretty sure he did more than forty thousand. And that was what was the name of that one? That thing was Peace Fly God or some shit like that. Peace Fly, I had to look. I can't find it right now. But yeah, you're right. Forty thousand is not really speaking to the stardom. It's that's not. It. It's not. No. It's not like y'all can you can bring up as much points as you want, but this, that shit don't work like that, bro. It never did. It never did. Like that just don't. Nah. Yeah. When it comes to stardom, the sales do matter. I'm sorry. Yeah. Peace, fly God. So let me look this up, bro. All right. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm. I'm yeah. And I think she's consistently been around that number. Yeah, he ain't never really moved nothing higher than that, bro. Cause let me see what Fever did. So Fever did twenty seven thousand. Westside, I mean, uh. Brent Fires Wasteland did 115 per first week. That's real good for him because he indie. He's straight. He's straight indie. Yeah, that's so real good for him. You telling me this is this is independent? You have a machine behind you and you doing 40, 40 to fifty thousand. And I think with Brent, he really has like how can I say it? Uh, uh, because I'm not really trying to discount nobody fan base. Like his fan base really fucks with his music. And I think he values that. That's yeah, why he don't really follow. trip. He had a co follow. Yeah. And for him to do 150 as an indie, that says a lot. That's That speaks to his fan base because his fan base really fucks with him. And that's why he, and honestly, when I hear him do interviews, and he don't do a lot, and he speak about like, uh, you know, his success, he don't really, he really don't talk about the negative side, bro. Like, he really don't. Like, he really appreciates his fan base, what he's been able to do as an indie artist. Because he had a doc when he was speaking about the independent life, and, you know, taking that route and how his yeah. team be really on the same page. So, for him to do 115 and then Meg do 40, technically, we could say that Brendan's a bigger star than Meg. I mean, that's that's a that's a valid point. 
that's a valid point. He don't got he don't got the muscle behind him that Meg got. No, you know what I'm saying. He don't. You so don't rub shoulders like, with Rock Nation. You you supposedly got all these deals. Brent Fires ain't got no deals like no Burger King or no Popeyes and all that other shit. Meg had a Nike deal. She do got a Nike she deal. Got a Nike yeah, she deal. do. She like, do. What are we talking the about? The clothing, because I got an email for that shit. Matter of fact, <laughs> you right. I forgot about that. You right. No, you, and when the music is different, man. I'm sorry. You you got you got to be moving different numbers than that. For you to be consistently around, like, has she ever done a hundred? Let me see what good news did, because I don't, I don't even think she's really done. Let me see. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Good news. Good news did. Oh, a hundred K right on the dot. Good news did a hundred K. A hundred K on the dot. So that's the highest as far as selling an album. Could be better though. I still feel like for her, if somebody wants to push that narrative, it needs to be over 200. Yeah. It needs to be over 200. But uh, game album, man. Another great project, man. Another great project. Uh, I don't really have no beef with this album at all. I know at first it's overwhelming with the features and the track listing of it being 30. Was really interested to see what the Nipsey album sounded like. I mean, not album, song sounded like, but I guess that didn't get cleared. But he really did a great fucking job on this album. I really only have a beef with two tracks, How Far I Came with Roddy Rich and Nikki Beach. But this album flowed perfectly. It flowed perfectly. And, you know, when people looked at the track listing the night before release, and he really didn't rely on these features. He's really putting in his work on this on these songs as well. Like, the features are not carrying this album. Um, no, from what I've been listening to, like he definitely was holding his own. Like, he was it, holding his own. It's not a feature. Is he not relying on just features to carry him through? Like, you know, he did his thing for sure. And yes, it's an hour and fifty five, but I might sound crazy. This don't sound like a thirty track album. As crazy as that might sound, it really don't. Like, it really does flow perfect. You know, I broke it up personally. I I, I listened to the first fifteen when it released, and I listened to the rest, and then I ran it through again. And then, you know, a little bit when I was on the road. But this shit really flows perfectly. He did a great job. I could tell him and Hit Boy really took their time. In, they locked in together. They locked in together. And shout out to Hit Boy, too, because he's really been doing this thing. But this is a great fucking album. And, yeah, I, like, even, and I always say he's never put out a bad project. Never. For me, for me to listen to the first half of it, like I don't I didn't really have no gripes with it. Um, and I think you'll like the second half better. I'm going to listen to the second half when I get back in the crib. But we listen to the... To the Black Slim Shady track, and I saw a lot of mixed reviews for it. A lot of people were trying to trying to talk down on it, but I wanted to listen to it before I had my own opinion. And it really wasn't that bad. Like bro was bro was doing his thing on that shit. Like a lot of people were saying like a ten minute diss song, and I'm like, bro, like y'all don't know game. <laughs> 300, this, 400. Then this a niggas fifteen. Twenty minutes. minutes. Plus. Like, twenty. Like, yeah, twenty <laughs> minutes plus. Like. I just don't. I don't know, man. Like, but the I didn't have a problem with the black the black slim shady track. Uh, great concept, great in my con- opinion. Great concept. Great concept. Um, you know, I'm the st- st- Stan little brother shit was dope. That yeah. was genius, in my yeah, opinion. Was, to get his to get his little brother twenty, years, twenty years, later. years later. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a dope. And then just to break down at different points in his career, yeah. Eminem style, what he was doing, and all this other shit. Speaking to Dre, Fifty Cent, like. He did a great job with this fucking diss. It wasn't him just rapping like on 300 bars. And those yeah, were good too. Yeah. But this had a meaning behind it. Yeah, it was more, it was more, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> he did his thing on this shit. He did his thing. He on did. That. He did his thing. Uh, as far as my favorite, um, I would say Save. Save it for last with Rick Ross. Um, that was special. Um, money Cash Clothes with ASAP. Talk to me nice with Meek Mill, Money Bag. Killers with Cam. Heart versus Mind. That's the title of the album. That's kind of in the middle. That's track eleven. That's real good. No smoke at the polo lounge. Real good. No man. I'm gonna just tell you. There's about two runs throughout this album that's flawless. So from track eleven, Heart versus Mind to Ruby Rose with Twister and Jeremiah. That's that's a that's an elite run. So that's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight track. Then from Talk to Me Nice, which is track twenty one, all the way to the end thirty. Flawless. I ain't got no skips on that. So he really did his thing. La La Land, he had a dope concept with breaking down with the hats meant in LA. Mm-hmm. 
mm. on that. That was real dope. Um, even the Fabio track, burning checks right after easy. Yeah, I thought I thought I was gonna skip that, but he, he ain't him and Fabio did they think on that song. Voodoo, that's a dope ass track. OPP with Young Boy, fire. Yeah. Um, that Chrome Slugs with uh with Lil Wayne and uh, G Herbo. Yeah, that shit was hard. That shit was um, hard. I'm gonna give YG a little credit, man, because I didn't think I was gonna like outside, but that shit fire. Um, and then the transition game out the gate was fire from one time in the easy. Mm-hmm. That told a story kind of sorta, of, so that was dope. But man, he really did a good job, and I think with him prepping, cause he hyped the fuck out this album, and I can say that he, he delivered. He delivered. He delivered. He mm-hmm. definitely delivered. And like I always say, he doesn't... Born to Rap was a great album, too. What do you think this put him as far as... Uh, I was going to ask that. I album, don't know if he was going to ask that. Album rankings for the year? What do you think this going to put him at? I got a top three, man. For me, personally. I wouldn't be mad if, if, if somebody put him top five. Top five. I got album. Tron up there. I got his shit up there. Um, Mozzie shit is up there. Um, I got this over Kendrick shit, but Kendrick had a good album. Yeah, Kendrick album was good. But I, this Kendrick is, got a top five album for the this, year. This, this is better than Kendrick shit, in my opinion. Do y'all think we getting down to two this year? We might. I will put it past. Because I didn't think we was going to get down to when we say we was going to get it. And we got it. So, I think we'll get down to two this year. Um, I also want to speak to just Game's legacy as far as him dropping this album. Because this nigga ain't never going to retire. But if he's going to continue to put out quality shit like this, I ain't yeah, against it. I'm, I'm but, dog, uh, we... We don't have to, because this is all subjective at the end of the day. But just recognition wise, though, he got to be considered top twenty all time. I wouldn't argue that. Game has to be considered top twenty all time, man. Like aside all the other shit, we don't necessarily have to talk about because we've talked about it plenty of times. Just as far as his artistry, his music, what he's done to the game, just it's not easy just since like- since two thousand five to not have no duds says a lot to me. Absolutely no duds. I'm talking about. There's not an album in his discography that I look at and be like, okay, I'm I'm cool without that shit. He has literally delivered on every album since 2005. That has to that has to account for something because a lot of greats have dropped albums in between time. A lot of greats that have on their resume. Yeah, and they're still considered great. Yeah, I'm not putting him, you know, top five, top ten. Or he has to be at least considered top twenty for what he's done for the rap game, bro. There's no way that you can, if you was to say from 2005 to 2022. He's put out what eight albums? Let me see. Is it eight albums? It might be eight. Uh, I'm gonna look up right now. So from 2005, he's put out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten albums. Ten albums. Okay, yeah. On an average, you would think, okay, if you was asking somebody, how many does you think he got? At least probably three. about two to three. At least, at least three. He at ain't got three. none. Let's run it down. The documentary classic. Classic. Off top. Doctor's Advocate, I wouldn't consider a classic. Great album. Great album. Great album. LAX, great, great album. album. Red album. Great album. Jesus Peace, classic. That's a classic. To me, that's his best album. Documentary 2, great album. 1992, great album. Born to Rap, great album. This right here, great album. So you got the like, you really got I got man, listen. He up there. Well, if you put it like that, he got to be at least top 15. I wouldn't be against it. Because <laughs> a, a lot of the greats don't have flawless uh, discography. The nigga that he dissing for one. Oh, he's been trashed the entire back end. <laughs> entire back end. And he's he's regarded the, the greatest to some people. Yeah. So, top five for a lot of people. Yeah. So He addressed that on the diss too. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He did. So he's been given a lot of grace in that aspect. And I really feel like Game was a better rapper than than Dog anyway. He said it on Drink Champs, and I agree. Yeah, but yeah, he's not better than me. I'm sorry. But I mean, <laughs> he, you think what, Eminem responds? Nah, I just want to get to that. <laughs> Do you like? Cause I saw his daughter even was like trying to like. Talk. She chimed in. Yeah, she was like, "It's crazy what, what some rappers do to 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 reclaim their relevance and all this other shit." Hold on, Haley, we not doing it's that. Like, we not doing that because for one, your, that man always been relevant. It's for always one, and for one, your dad was beefing with whole pop stars. <laughs> like, we just we just, just going we just going tell it what it is. He wasn't beefing with out the no, gates. Out the gates, he was beefing with with boy bands and and. and See, just, she don't know about that because she, 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 she was she was a pop, she was a baby. Yeah, she was a baby. She was a baby. I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give him some grace on that, but your yeah. dad was beefing with with child stars. Your dad wasn't beefing with no with no real niggas. So let's 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 just keep it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like your dad was beefing with 
you know, them Christina people. Aguilera, Britney Spears, yeah, the whole like, nine. He wasn't, Boy bands. He wasn't beefing with the <laughs> the hoes or nothing like that. Nah, you he know wasn't. What I'm he wasn't. He wasn't throwing shots at them. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when we talk about then he piggybacked on Fifty shit with the whole John ja Rule shit. That's what. That's my <laughs> thing. Like it's like, bro, like that was some camp shit. That like was that was some camp, camp shit. shit. Like yeah. that wasn't like you was like the anchor of that beef, bro. Like and then he got this false. Remember a couple years ago. When I felt like him and Andre kind of got, now, I didn't mention him, but I kind of feel like he's in that mode too of the boogeyman title. Cause mm. not for nothing, niggas really wasn't, they had no reason to go at Eminem cause you wasn't fucking yeah, with nobody. Was really he crazy. was really like, but he got this persona because he, he was a white rapper who could really rap, rap good. Well, you don't want it with Eminem. You don't want it with him. That's not, that's and not And I think true that's because at the time we didn't have a white rapper who was really killing and all that shit, but I that didn't really I, give him the I the the, the real, pass. Bro. A lot of a lot of that shit that he be doing don't move me, bro. Like no, it, I didn't. I didn't really look at him as oh, you don't want to rap with him. No, he can hold his own. He can hold. But his let's own. not do that. But he can he can definitely be he can be handled. Yeah, I didn't think MGK got washed. I still I think, think I think he had the better diss. I think he had the better diss. I think he had one of the most precise diss too, because that yeah. shit was clean as a bitch. Yeah, it was clean. It was, it was very it was, clean was, and precise. It was a clean shot. So I mean. When we when we when we when we be completely honest about the whole Eminem like arc career arc is like, I mean, you ain't got a better discography than Eminem. Yeah, hands down. Does he have a better discography than Nas? It can you can I wouldn't be mad if somebody said that. I wouldn't be mad at that. And this is not me saying he has anything better than Illmatic or it was written because to me those are his two best. Those are crazy. But Jews outside of those two. Outside of those two, a conversation to be had. I wouldn't argue. I'm a, I'm a huge Nas fan. Y'all know this. But I mean, I wouldn't. But let's, let's, let's run it down. Let's run it down. Now, the last few albums Nas has been dropping are fire. Fire, yeah. Very fire. That, King, the Kanye one was King, ass. King's Disease, King's Disease 2. And uh, yeah, one and two was. You didn't like two? No, I liked it. Oh, okay. Those are fire. Those are fire albums. The first one is the, the best the, one. The latest one he dropped with Hit Boy with what was that last year or year before? You talking about um this? I mean, uh, Magic. The Magic that was fire. Like, you know, and he's you know up there. Like he's a few years older than. All right, game. so Nas discography. It, Illmatic. It was written. I am Nostradamus. Stillmatic. Godson. Street Disciple. Hip Hop is dead. Untitled, Life is Good, Nazir, King's Disease, King's Disease 2, Magic. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 albums. I say out of that 14, he got what? He got a... Uh... Illmatic, it was written off the gates. That's boom, classics. Then you got I Am. I liked I Am. I liked I Am. I didn't like it was written that much, though. What? I don't think that that's his best album. You think this is his best album? I think it was written as better than Illmatic, bro. And I'm not the only one to say that. I mean, yeah. it is what it um, is. Nostradamus, put it in the dumpster, bro. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't like Nostradamus <laughs> like that. It was written was my shit. But I like I like Stillmatic and God's Son. I think yes. those are very solid albums. Street Disciple? Now, Street Disciple? I don't know. Hip Hop is Dead? I mean, I, did, I thought that whole Hip Hop is Dead movement was on some hate and shit anyway. But Untitled? The Nigger album? Nah. I wasn't feeling that. Life is good. Life good is, album. Life is good album. Life is good. And the distant, the distant relatives album he dropped with uh with Demar. That's a collaborative that's album. A collaborative that's collaborative under, album. Yeah. But I mean, that's a very very good album. That was, that was a album. very very good album. Um, Nazir dumpster. No, Nazir is dumpster. Then uh, you got King's Disease, King's yeah. Disease too, and then Magic. That's a that's a good run. That those th- those last three albums. That's a good album run. You know what yeah. I'm saying? To say that he's almost fifty, so you know. I just feel like game got him out because he ain't got no nah, duds. Game got him because yeah, game don't got a game don't got a, a album where you where it's, as a collective niggas like this album ass like you know what I'm saying. So, mm-hmm. I, he, like Lil Wayne got don't got that. No, he Hove don't. Don't got that. You know what I'm saying. Hove got albums where people as collectives weren't feeling. But I think his his best are just so good yeah, his that you can't really because those are those are like. Iconic album. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't like, game and really got one. Documentary would really be like that the would only be his, one like, iconic yeah, one. That would be his blueprint. If I personally feel Jesus Peace is his best album though. Mm-hmm. Um But he got two classics. A lot of people don't got two classics, like for sure classics. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? So you'd have to put him in the top fifteen, top ten if you want. I have to fifteen. Fifteen, 15, 15 for sure. Is good. Fifteen is good. I fifteen. You know. But I would put him up there just on rapping ability alone. Like that'd be my thing. Like 
Like, yeah, the albums do mean something when you're talking about uh when you when you talking about stardom again, like you're talking about stardom and just like what you mean to the genre of rap. But and we just talking about top ten, top fifteen rapping that's rapping. Like I I would put him top fifteen just because I know he can rap his ass off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like that's what it always comes down to me. Can the nigga really spit? Mm-hmm. And he's been doing it since 2005. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know. That says a lot for 20, lot. 2005 to 2022. He never regressed as a rapper. So. 100% facts. Facts. Like, it's just. Hey, man. Salute the game, man. Salute the game for another great album. I'm definitely going to be keeping this shit in a rotation because it's just a lot of songs that I could go back to and just spin and then. It, it, the, I, I salute to him for the features too. These features wasn't just thrown on there; they they fit for each artist. Mm-hmm. Like money, cash, clothes that fits ASAP Rocky. Yeah. Killers with Cameron that fit Cameron. That gave me that J Cole song vibe. The uh, I ninety uh, what was that shit? That's I ninety five South. Yeah. Uh, that shit was fire. So like I said, salute to him. And hey man, great job. So who else dropped? Was that about it? It was more like that was basically like the the heavy hitter albums, basically. I didn't really get too much. I don't know if I gave him a lot of credit before. If not, I'm gonna give it to him again. Joey Badass 2000 album was very, very good. I need to listen to that. I'm hearing very, good very good. That album, but yeah. Very, very good album, bro. Very good yeah. album. Um, but yeah, man. So we got to talk about this player empowerment shit, man. Um, this been a conversation I seen people been having, and I wanted to discuss it because. It, it, like with this whole KD shit that's going on, mm-hmm. um, there's been new developments with the KD shit this year. Looking like he might be holding out, so he's not gonna play at all. That's what the latest report. I thought the trade was gonna be done this month. So they're saying KD might just sit like all together. Like, from what I seen recently, yeah. Mm. Looking like that, it's, that it's, next, it's a that, tug of war going on. That next CBA gonna be crazy. It, it might, might be a lockout. Do you think NBA? This is, I'm gonna ask you quick. This is a question I seen. Do you think uh, player empowerment has gone too far? Uh, this is my thing because it, we got to kind of. This actually kind of can tie back to what we talked about early with the jobs. So it's like I mean, with this KD shit, bro. I'm not. I can't really give him too much too much leeway, bro, because you know. I don't know what's going on in, in behind the scenes, but to us, well, it looked like the beef is with the GM and the coach. But to us, you you went and vouched for that coach. The organization did everything that you and Kyrie wanted to, them to do. And I some people just gave me pushback on that, saying that's not really the case. But what's the, what's the case then? Because everything that's being reported from the moment that it was Kyrie, Katie going to to the Nets, right? It's been nothing. Hey, Kyrie, Katie, they signed off for Steve Nash. Kyrie, Katie, vouched for DeAndre Jordan. They did moves that y'all wanted them to do. James, y'all, they, they y'all cleared, y'all cleared the way for James Harden. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like they, they did, they, 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 they've given y'all so much, and it's what y'all wanted based off the work y'all put in the league. Okay. That's on y'all resume. Y'all mm-hmm. y'all have the right to. Hey, I want this. I want that. Same thing like a job. This is y'all resume. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right. It's not. I just don't think it's fair. For one, y'all still got a decent team. You know what I'm saying? It's not like y'all bottom of the barrel. Y'all did. Y'all was eighth place. Well, what they was what seventh in the East this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, y'all had injuries and shit like that. It happens, but I've seen seven place seeds go far in, in the playoffs. Like end of the day, y'all still had Kyrie KD. Shit can happen either way. Um, I don't know, man. I just feel like they, they to me, I feel like they need more time. They, they, they y'all should just run it back. Um, Especially with Ben there, yeah, I mean, you acquired him for a reason. That, that, that's for, really my thing. That's my thing. You got to give that a chance. Give it a chance. You know what I'm saying? So now you, y'all just gonna leave Ben there high and dry. I mean, yeah, whatever, whoever y'all trade for, y'all still get a, a decent package a, a, for a KD. Decent package. Yeah. I mean, Ben gonna be straight regardless. But it's like, I mean, y'all y'all went and got that man for a reason. He didn't play in the playoffs. Um, but I mean, it's a whole new season coming up. We probably like what two months out. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean. I don't have too much for them as far as like you know being on their side. Now as far as player empowerment, I'm for mm-hmm. player empowerment, but not in this situation because 
to me, from what I've been seeing reported and what I've been seeing y'all seeing them do, they've they've been they've been catered to. Mm-hmm. They've been catered to. They've they've gotten a lot that a lot of superstars didn't get as far as coming into a new situation with a new team. So it's like I just don't. Do don't, you do you feel like player empowerment? Do you feel like they could come to a median as far as owners and players? As far as players still being able to express their power power and then owners still being fairly compensated for I'll say their acquirement of certain players. Main I'm talking mainly you, franchise what mean, players. What you mean by uh, for time, for time on the team? Like, granted, certain situations come up, you want to trade out. For me, it has to, I, I feel like it has to be dire. And then be honest with you, have we really seen a lot of player empowerment over the last few years? Because from what I've seen, contrary... Seen the big dogs be, be, get their way. The big dogs get their way. Honestly, I've been seeing teams really work with players. As yeah. far as putting them in... If they want to go to a certain team, I, I see it working out that yeah, way. Yeah, I, I haven't seen... All right, like even like when even when they were saying how uh, when Harden first wanted to leave Houston, mm-hmm. okay, I I didn't see no blowback from Houston like just not wanting to work with him to to get him where he wanted to go. AD in the beginning, but they got worked out eventually. It got worked out eventually, and we all saw it happen from that 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 team even lost their job behind all that all that behind. Yeah. He handled that. He handled, he handled that, that bad. He handled that bad. So Paul George, if, if anything. The players have always had empowerment when the, when it comes to this type of shit. I like, think the only one out of the recent years where they really wanted to stick it to a player was Kawhi Leonard. With the Spurs? 100%. Him getting traded to Toronto, we all thought they sent him there to die. Yeah, I wouldn't argue that. I wouldn't argue that. Only, I just feel like it, it kind of, it was more personal with that Kawhi shit. I because think so. Because they thought it was, uh, I don't think the Spurs were, weren't used to a player coming through with his own, his own um, advisement, like you know, never, not within so that organization. Like, yeah, not in that org. It don't work like that over there. It don't. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's yeah. kind of on the same Everybody page. The go same by the page. plan. So yeah. When you got a player like Kawhi, when he come through, especially with his talent level is like you know he wasn't really, he didn't listen to the doctors. He didn't take their the doctor's word for for what it was and. You know, I think the how how it came out in the media, the Spurs didn't like that. So yeah, I can see how. I mean, I took it like that too when I when I saw that they were trading to Toronto. Oh yeah, they they sent them out there to rock. Because w- I got to give the owners in the front office a little bit of slack in terms of if we're making certain trades and even in the off season free agency moves to acquire you. You gotta give me. I'm not bro. mad at them for feeling like you should at least give us two to three years. You gotta give me at least two years, bro. Two two solid years. You know what I'm saying? You gotta give me that, bro. Because not for Katie, nothing. Katie didn't even play the first year he was there. You know what I'm saying? 20, 2021, 20, you was hurt for about thirty some games. Y'all lost in the playoffs. 2021, 20, 2022, 20, you get swept. That's technically two years you gave them. Because you didn't play the first year. You didn't play. And then I feel like with the acquirement, to me, the acquirement of Ben feels like that's why you need to at least stick it out this this like next they're not, year. They're, they're not giving you nothing to work with. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? You still, if y'all keep Kyrie, you still got Kyrie. You and Ben, you might have to fill in some more roster spots. Y'all lost Bruce Brown. I think y'all lost a couple other players, but you still got you still got something there. You know to say that you're still KD. The Ben Simmons shit to me is what really would get because he's a great player. He has a, a big flaw, but he if he does everything else, great. Yeah. Pair that with Katie and Kyrie, I feel like that needs to be done. But I feel like with his player empowerment movement, I think with the free agency thing, really, because unlike the NFL, they don't have a franchise tag. Mm-hmm. Even with the franchise tag in the NFL, I don't really feel it It really flexing too much. I feel like in the NFL, they're starting to get a little bit more flexibility as far as the players in terms of going where they want to. Yeah. We see with the that's, OB- that's recent. That's recent. Recent, though. yeah. Like that's with OBJ really, situation, yeah. the Cleveland shit was done. They got him. He got up out of there, and he was able to sign with the Rams. It wasn't no trade done. Mm-hmm. None of that. I just feel like the players have to hold up their end too, in a sense. I feel like Katie or he he, owe, and it's, it's it's crazy even saying like that. I feel like he he owes them at least one more year. That's how I feel. At <laughs> least another year. <laughs> like. Cause we talked about that even when there was reports of Zion wanting to get out of uh, New Orleans. It's like, bro, like 
not for nothing, my nigga. Like, you just got here. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like, I really wasn't subscribing to the reports, but if it was, she was like, my nigga, you just got you here. You just got here. You mm-hmm. just got here. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? You didn't like, even play most of your rookie you year. You didn't even play most of your rookie year. And it's like, when you when you did play, it was phenomenal. We seen what you can 27 do. 27 and 7. Easy. You walk, in the, you walk in there with that. So it's like, I can't just be like, all right. Blow the blow the Zion experiment. experiment That's not fair to I mean. the Pelicans. That's not fair to the Pelicans, you know. Especially and they got some great shit going on some, too. Y'all got a good core down there that just needs some more time. You know what I'm saying? It's like when we talk when we're talking about it's like all right, we give the Warriors so much praise because they drafted into it and they believed into this shit. And it's like, okay, what if what realistically if, you had to give a, a, a organization time, bro? What if what if what if when Steph was first coming into the league and he was having ankle problems, they was like, you know what, we we cool. We just done with this whole Steph shit. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It could've it could've easily went like that. Even though he didn't, but I get what you're saying, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he have he's, But they was ass. They was ass. And he could have just been like, you know what, let me just go ahead and move on. But they built, they built, built, built. They built, they built. But I think with with the whole joining up, which I'm not against. It has made skewed a lot of mindset of the players to think that you know if I go do this, I'm guaranteed. But that does not work like games. that. You still gotta win games. You still gotta. Let's win. Let's go over the last three, four years. The Raptors, 2020 was uh, the Lakers. Lakers. 2021 was the Bucks. Bucks. This year, Warriors. Those weren't quote unquote the super teams Those that got the, got it Those done. Weren't. I don't think that Lakers team was super team. No, they wasn't. That Bucks team was definitely not a. Super that was just team. two superstars. Kawhi, that was no super team. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like we can, it's easy to say, you know, these niggas gonna win through. When niggas when 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 Harden went to the Nets, it was oh this shit scary. That was supposed scary. To, that's time. the big. That's the biggest flop. That might be the biggest flop. And bro. that might be the biggest flop in sports team history. Mm. Because of how it was assembled, how it was supposed yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, just how it came together. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. What other big three ever faltered this bad? This bad. No. Nah, they didn't they didn't even as a collective, y'all didn't even get to the Eastern Conference Finals. That should have been a minimum requirement for that team. Minimum. Minimum. Yes, I agree. So it's like, I mean And even if even if they if the shit is that dire of what K D is doing, cool. No, if there's some shit that we really don't know about what they was That's doing with the like, noises. I, don't, I can only speak to what I what I read. But my thing is, it couldn't have been that bad because when y'all was playing, it was up. And I feel like the biggest detriment to the Nets was injuries and COVID. You see what I'm saying? That's what I really feel like it's, it really was. I don't really think it's what they trying to make it to be. It can't because we watched, we watched, we them, watched them on them. the court. Y'all are phenomenal on court together. Even, like, even though it was a 16-game sample size... But it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And I feel like that was really the biggest. Re- now, whatever they had going on to where James felt like I had to get up out of here. Now, KD feel like I got to get up out of here. But here's my thing. Just to transition to this point. If it's reports that KD is cool with teaming up with Harden again, my whole thing is that whole All-Star Weekend shit and post that shit was unnecessary. Now, granted, KD and James are friends outside of basketball. Oh, you talking about when he when he picked the team and they left and all Harden? And it was oh, all that yeah, other yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here's my they thing. They just had the Travis Scott concert together. And that's my thing. Because me and you boys, right? Right, right. If we was to have different ideas of shit, we go different ways. I'm not going to fuel the shit yeah. nationally. He fed, he fed into that. He fed into that. Or act like, oh, this thing ain't shit. We picking them last. Or yeah, if LeBron yeah. or Chuck say some shit, yeah. you, you know. LeBron you get what I'm saying? His face and shit. Because we bigger than that. Because yeah. not for nothing, we're going to talk again. We're yeah. going to hang out. It's clear that y'all never stopped hanging out with each other. Y'all, y'all just with each other last week. And then how does it look on even perception-wise with Kyrie's situation? Mm-hmm. You leaving him. Because if me and you was to do that, we would be looked at as some hoes. If we was to like kind of make it seem like, oh, these two teaming up and not leaving this nigga yeah, hand, yeah, hard. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it was just funny to me. I'm not putting too much weight on it because my whole thing is if y'all really friends, it shouldn't have been carried like right. that from the jump. Yeah. You should have just understood because obviously James saw something that you Which just is, now are seeing. It's crazy because even back then, like I think he had an interview. Like They was asking Katie about that shit when Harden had left the Nets and he was like, you know... It's all good. Like he got to do what he got to do for himself. Mm-hmm. But then you do the like you said the all star shit, and it's <laughs> like you you feed into a narrative that clearly you don't believe in because you still cool with that man. And now you want out. So what is it that really was going on? Like we really don't know. But 
you want about the situation, but you went there. And people need to stop acting like the Nets was just this glamorous thing that was so attractive. Katie and Kyrie picked the Nets. Yeah, they picked that. They picked them. That, they, they they, initi- that wasn't a place to go. That they was initi- a dumpster. They initiate this whole experiment. They initiated this. That's why I, said I can't really give them too much. I can't give them too much when it comes to this because the Nets didn't ask for none of this from them. And, and, and even in that, they've been more than accommodating for them. So uh, that's what I keep saying. They keep a comment. I don't mean cut they, you off. No, you good. You but good. It's, they they have been accommodating them, bro. And that's and that's my biggest thing. Like people can paint it however you want. And I'm not mad at Joe side for kind of like you know what? I'm kind of fed up as an owner. We've already been in the dumpster. I want we experiment with Katie. I and they have been at their begging call. They have the Nets have been whatever y'all want. We give it to y'all. Y'all wouldn't pick DeAndre Jordan. Y'all went and signed off for of Steve Nash personally, and now y'all trying to throw Steve Nash under the bus. If he's not a good coach, cool, but that's what y'all asked for, and that's what they went and Sean, for And now Sean Marks is, they're not cool with Sean Marks because the reports about KD asking me or Sean Marks or Nash, that's real. So that oh, is okay, true. Okay, okay. So basically, he's telling them, it's either me or them. But I mean, y'all went- What recruit- you expect them to do, though? Y'all went recruited that man, though. Because Sean Marks from, G- from Golden State. Look like a pretty good GM to me. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. So argue. what's the beef? Yeah, let's get to the really the nitty gritty of like it. Y'all got all the tools necessary. So what's really the problem? Do y'all not like? Seem like some ego type shit yeah, going on, like man. Like some other shit that y'all just not trying to address publicly, right? Because if Nash, even some fans I talked to, Nash is supposedly like this terrible, terrible coach. To me, the man don't look that bad to me. Because when shit bad. rolling is rolling, if that's the case, fine. But what are you going to do after Nash that is going to trump KD and Kyrie? This shit about Tyron Lou, stop it. I'm not buying it. That man is locked in. Because he's there. locked in he's over locked there. He's locked in over there. That's and in regards even... to the fact if he was, you think the Clippers is just going to let this man go? Nah. No. He's proving himself over there. I I don't I I just I don't got nothing for them boys, bro. And I I rock with KD, I rock with Kyrie, but it's like, you know, I can't do the I can't I can't play the player empowerment card as, here. As a Boston fan, how do you feel about it possibly KD being a uh a, I don't a Celtic? I do, I don't want him. Not that expense of not, not Jalen the, Brown. Not the expense of our core like that, no. And I feel like y'all got the tools necessary to get back. Because he's saying he would like to play with, with Marcus Smart. Well if we trade for you, Marcus Smart might or, be in that package. He bro. might be in that package. So like what the fuck? Or Derek we, White, and yeah. that's a big piece. So what are we doing? Cause Rob will can't be touched. I honestly do not want him on our team. Like not not at what, not at what we have to have to give up. Because I tell you now, we, we do, <laughs> I'm just gonna be real with you. Like I tell you now, we 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 trade we trade Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and we give up probably another piece just to bring KD. KD at what thirty four. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't see I don't see him and Tatum being that lethal to get us back to the finals. Mm. That's just that's just the facts, and we just was talking about windows here. We don't got that much of a window to trade youth for a thirty four year old, and it's harder to get back to the finals after you lost. It's that's harder, right. and, and and it's, it's just 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 because we get Katie, we're not guaranteed a a a, a, a one way ticket to the finals. It don't work like no, that. We had to, we had we went through two game sevens to get to the finals this year. It don't work like that. It's not easy to win a chip. I don't see KD getting us through two kick game sevens this year. Not at not not by not with the East at, got going not on. Not with the East got going on. Hell no. We better off running with, with, with what we got. We made a few trades this year. We I think we good. We don't need to do too much. Now it's like at a point where I don't know. I don't. I. I haven't seen Jalen Brown speak on this, but I'm pretty sure that man... He's, he feels a little disgruntled. I'm, I wouldn't be mad at him because, like, bro, like, what the fuck? We just got to the finals. Run this shit back. Run this, run this shit back. Like, we... we. The chemistry to me is the biggest piece. Y'all have it. We have it. Y'all have it. We have it. So why are we going to... I just don't even understand us even still having our name in this hat. Like, it just... It doesn't make it's any Y'all sense. in Philly right now. It just don't make no sense. And even if Philly was to do that again, it's like... You giving up Maxi, Harris, Stiebel, oh, them Maxie, some core pieces. Maxi is gone if y'all go get KD. Y'all not getting KD for just uh, Thibault and some other niggas. Y'all not just about to do that. 
Because his ceiling is high as a bitch. Maxi is out of there. Yeah, man. I agree. I 100% agree. So, I don't know, man. It's it's looking like it's it's gonna get it's gonna get it's gonna get worse before it gets better. That's all I can say. Because it looked like it's a tug of it looked like it's a tug it's of a war tug going of war. on, man. It's a tug of war. It's like it's it's August 14th, man. This trade should have been went down. Should have been went down, or it needs to happen this week. Yeah. But if you had to predict the landing spot, where do you think it's be? I think it's Boston. I mean. That's what that's really what it's looking like. I feel like we shooting ourselves in the foot and the ass at the same time. Because we really don't need this dude. Like, you know, I'm a I'm a KD fan, but I'm gonna be real too. Like when it comes down to just what I've seen us do and just like like I said, like the East got a lot going on this year again. You still got Giannis coming, you still got other niggas coming. I just don't see us giving up the pieces that we would have to give up to get KD and still having us be a uh, surefire finals contender. No, mm-hmm. that's not that's not gonna be us no more. So I mean, it's looking like we're gonna do that, but we we really doing us a disservice. I feel you on that. That nigga need to just sit where he at. <laughs> Honestly, I feel you on that. So uh, raising Canaan is back, man. I watched. I'm watching tonight, man. Yeah, man. I watched it last night. I heard man. the first episode of fire though. First episode is fire. It's gonna. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of storylines with this one. Um, based off of last season, you know, it ended with you know Kanan shooting, you know, a cop slash his father. Right. Um, he survived. So you know, coming to Raquel is so trash for that, by the way. But uh, <laughs> she dog. She really got this shit moving though. Okay. She moving this shit like a monopoly board, bro. Okay. So she, you know, unique. You know, his situation, you'll yeah. see what happened with that. That shit crazy. But um, and shout out to Joey Badass for that role, too, because he really embodies he that was, role. He, was, he bodied that shit last season. Like, you definitely fit this actor role, my nigga. Like, I don't know. You might might be even killed with this rapping and, and, and this actor shit, bro. You killing the rapping and you killing this actor shit. I'll give you your flowers on that. Um, But, yeah, man, it looked like they they picking off on the right foot, man, right. with Razor Kanan. Definitely looking for Force to come back. Definitely looking forward to BMF coming back. Uh, sh- just shout out to 50 man 50 you doing your thing You know what's crazy sure, 50 didn't really promote uh, He just had a Breakfast Club interview this week He didn't really promote Raising Canaan Nah no, He didn't really promote it he like that He didn't really talk about it He really don't He really kind of shitting with stars Cause he feel like he should have More more leeway and more say so over man, there Nigga go to HBO man I mean it's kind of It's kind of hard now Because you know I don't know They contract like neither Cause you no, know, he's, he's a producer He like Like a I think he's kind of locked in, you know, as far as like his place. Well, then they need to mend that relationship because y'all have built a solid foundation with stars. He, he made he made a good point. He was like, bro, like, I mean, for what I've done, man, it's like, this don't even make sense. When have you ever seen a fucking TV show episode get leaked? Like, my, my shows get leaked. This this never happens. Like, when we... When, when, his shows do begin like, leaked. This only, this Insecure only never got leaked. leaked. Insecure never got leaked. Sopranos, Stranger Things don't no, get leaked. Just, Sopranos. Sopranos. You say never, The Wire never got leaked. The Wire never got leaked. Breaking Bad never gets leaked. Like, so how, how does shit get leaked? You know what I'm saying? It's like he, they need to address that for real. Yeah. They got to do right by him because he's right. done. He's run a lot of money to stars. That's what I'm saying. It's like you know when y'all do your whole uh, first three months for twenty dollars, y'all promote that around the power shows. So y'all need to be y'all need to show that man some more respect. I mean, to be man. honest with you, that's what's not. I mean, stars is doing anything. Don't get it wrong mm-hmm. because of the subscription base alone. But when you think of stars, I think of power yeah, series. I, I just think of power, power series. That's because I'm be honest with you. When them shits is off, I'm the fuck I'm with unsubscribing. Power. I mean, I fuck with P Valley now, but I mean that's the <laughs> only show that I really watch on Power besides yeah. the Powerverse. That's it. So y'all need to do right by that man. That's how I feel, bro. Like it's 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 not really it's not something that I, I'm looking forward to the power shit when that shit come back around. But yeah, man, Razor Canaan is is definitely starting off on the right foot. I'm definitely ready for BMF to come back. That's my shit. That's the one I'm I'm really looking forward we'll to. Have to wait a little bit for BMF. I know you probably looking forward to season three of Tariq shit. That's coming right after this. So I'm I'm ready for that. Shit, we yeah, got, so it'll be Tariq, then I'm assuming force. It'll be, it's, it's this, is this right here, then Tariq. Then force. Then force. And I think probably, And I know a lot of niggas got on force the first two, three episodes with that bitch and it's fire. It was slow at first. Yeah, it, it was. was it was. It was slow. That bitch ended fire though. Yeah, I ain't got no beef with you on what for us. I'm gonna stick with it. But um yeah, man, we got some good some good TV coming up. We got the last season of Atlanta next week. Just was about up. to say that. That come out with September? Yeah, September I think 
like the second week of September. Perfect time because football will Man, be back. Football will be back. So shout out to Atlanta too. Y'all had a great season four too. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this to this season. That was quick too. Mm-hmm. They probably felt like they owed us for the pandemic and then post yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, get that shit over with now though. So. Yeah. So yeah, man, got some good TV out now. Man. Great TV. Stranger Things will have a season five. I mean, they kind of have to. That shit. When y'all, fire, when you, when you think they're gonna wrap that shit up? They oh, gonna... season five. That's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, season five. Shout out to a season four because that bitch was amazing. Best show on Netflix, arguably next to Ozark. Next to Ozark, so. Yeah, man, it's a it's a it's a lot of bidding wars for these shows, man. So I think stars need to do right by fifty because I don't think he mind going to Netflix or Hulu or none of these other none of these other platforms, man. I'm That's all I got to sure, say. Like, when it's all said and done with stars, he's probably not gonna fuck with them no more. Like, you gonna take it somewhere else. Once his obligations up, like it's over with. Like, mm. that's what that's what They're I taking got all from, that talent with him, bro. I mean, rightfully so. I mean. I don't think people because BMF could easily be on HBO. Yeah, easily. I feel like we, as far as like uh, like curating, like you know, just just uh, acting talent and like you know, always having something in the pipeline as far as content goes. Like we ain't really seen what Fifty Cent been doing in a long time, like mm-hmm. or ever. Like I don't think we ever seen is like and like you know the the good thing about it, like. Every actor from the shows, they fuck with each other. Like, you see them in the club, like, they rappers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like... He's um, doing a great job yeah, with this a, shit. He's doing a good job with that shit. So. I'm trying to think of something else if I might have missed as far as TV-wise. Supposed to be coming back out or I missed. Not sure about it. People just be talking about P-Valley every Sunday, so... It's a season finale tonight. For okay. Season two, so. You like it so far? Yeah, I rock with it. It's pretty cool. Okay. I like it, man. You know, they doing anything. Think we'll get season. snowfall in February again, like how we normally do the last two years. That'll be back next year. So around Super Bowl time, we should be having snowfall back. And that, and then I don't know why niggas shitting on y'all. Niggas doing way too much with that John. I think y'all using that John Singleton shit as a crutch, and that shit ain't been that bad post John Singleton. It actually, hasn't been bad. It's still actually it's been getting better per season. This would be season six, right? Yeah, it would be season yeah. six. Now I ain't gonna lie. Now this season, it was a good. It was good, but it wasn't like. But it wasn't it wasn't trash. I ain't gonna say it was starting trash. with the tiger show, that might have been episode four or five. Post mm-hmm. that, it got back to like its roots. But I still appreciated the episodes before that. Yeah. I don't think it was as bad I, as what people was making it seem, bro. I think people was kind of reaching. It ain't I'm just talking about the season overall. I'm not even gonna harp on those episodes because I saw people try to talk about the tiger and all that other shit. But it's like I'm just saying overall, it probably won't be my favorite season, but it's not a I wouldn't say the season was ass. It was better than four. Way it was better than four. It was but I think four. each season got better. I think all of them are elite. I think all the seasons are elite. Yeah, I don't really had a problem with season five. Like because here's the did. thing: even post that right, Franklin really getting back to his mindset as yeah. far as like that whole Jerome shit with uh how he got his bread back. That 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 get that got back to how Franklin is strategic with yeah. this shit, bro. Yeah. Then the shit with old boy. What's what's the dude, man? The new character. Cause that's the one I thought. That's who I was like. Who the fuck hitting all his spots? And I and I told you I was like, man, I think it's a new character. What's the dog name, man? I can't think of his name, but he's a uh, old boy brother, the one he killed. Mm-hmm. And shout out to him too. He's on raising Canaan. He's doing a good job with his role. He's a uh, Lou. Cause remember he was uh, Kevin in Snowfall. Uh, yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know his real name though, but he played Lou in uh yeah. in, in that. And he's doing his thing too. But I, I fuck with Snowfall, man. I'm ready for the last season. I think it's gonna be a great season. We all know how that shit ended. Teddy got caught up in the web, so I'm interested to see how you gonna get how you gonna get back with that. His relationship is kind of fragile with Franklin because he froze that man account. Took seven seventy three million dollars is crazy, bro. You gotta die. <laughs> <laughs> then his mom got some connections with the KGB type shit. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Shit gonna be fire. Season six is gonna be fire. But yeah, man, that's pretty much all I got, man. We got anything else before we get up out of here? Nah, I'm good, brother. I'm good, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to all the listeners and supporters as usual. Always tap into YouTube, SoundCloud, you know, Apple. Likes, like, subscribe, and share, man. All that good shit. Y'all know what to do, do man. Do all that, man. You dig? So like we say every week on here, man, if you hear anything to get you in your feelings, feel some type of way, always remember. We're just some messages. We out. <laughs>